50 is doing the one-handed jazz hands. <laughs> okay, we're live. I hope you got your big girl panties on. Episode 72 of the Who Move My Freedom podcast, live from the Big Daddy Gun Studios. Big I'm Daddy. Hank Strange. I'm Hank Strange, and we've got, mm -hmm. check this dude out right here, 50% tactical. 50. 50 <laughs> is in the building. Derek Gray, we can tell people who, what your um, secret name is, right? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, okay, right. there you go. <laughs> I mean, I asked that after I actually tell it. So. Yeah, after you out him, you already hear. Yeah, I don't know where I'm getting that feedback from. So, um, I don't know. Is that from me? I don't think so. Getting some feedback from someone here. I fixed here. it. I fixed it. I fixed it. I fixed oh, that's you, Walter. Forgive okay. me, Father. Forgive me, Father. I've sinned. <laughs> <laughs> Do uh, two Hail Marys. <laughs> You'll be fine. You know, hey, speaking of that, uh -huh. now that you brought that up with the. I brought the Catholic thing up. You know why uh -huh. they have the confession confessional booth? Why? So the uh, priest wouldn't um, have their way with the females confessing. That's why there's the separation. That's what I, I just read the other day. That's why they separate them with that's the walls. Why, that's why they originally invented that. <laughs> <laughs> that was the idea behind it, I guess. You know. <laughs> It'll be kind of like a cyclical thing. You'd be committing yeah, to sin and, <laughs> and confessing at the same time. I guess it doesn't work with which, the ultra, ultra which, boys, but you know. Whatever. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so, as you see, we have Walter Keller from Safety Harbor. Hey, Firearms, everybody. What's also up? here with us. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and guess what? Tonight we're planning on talking about, uh, we're going to talk about Fiddy Tactical, of course, his YouTube channel. Um, I think a very well produced YouTube channel that's out there from someone I've known. Probably as long as I've been doing this, I've known you, man. Yeah, it's been a long time. Yeah, so, you know, you're there's a lot of stuff going on with you. You're still in school, right? Yeah, I'm in my last semester of my bachelor's degree program in film. And, oh, cool. uh, can't wait to uh, <laughs> to graduate. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Yeah, man. I know you're going to be doing lots of cool things out there, kicking ass. And, you know, he's a filmmaker already because he's got his YouTube channel going. You know, probably the most famous for burning down ranges. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Yeah. Did you see that video, Walter? No, I have not. But Oh, <laughs> you got to watch that video. I've, yeah, I mean, you mean like I've, ranges from shooting tracers and stuff? Yeah, like that? you should go pull up Fiddy's channel. I actually, in the in the description of this video, is a link to his channel. Okay. Um, what What is, like, if you're going to search for that video on your channel, Derek, what is it? Um, it's the Dragon's Breath... Uh, be safe with this round. Oh, oh. Yeah. Dra it's something. Put in Dragon's Breath because that's how you'll find it. It'll come up, and that, and that yeah. should give you a clue to how they burn. But it's it's like amazing. yeah, the first the first the first video that pops up for Dragon's Breath should be like FPS Russia, and then mine should be probably next. Yeah. Oh, so <laughs> that's just you know that's that that's probably your biggest video, right? Yeah, it's got three point three million views. Wow. Wow, that's that, amazing. That, that, that's because it's a fail video. I mean, I didn't know what I was really what I was doing when I was editing it. I just knew that I had to get it out there as quick as I could. There was a couple spelling mistakes, uh, and, and then I edited it out for time. I was just trying to get it to, so it wasn't like over, you know, like what ten minutes or whatever. So I edited it for time, and I took myself like the footage of myself stomping out the fire, try, trying to help out before I almost fell in. Mm -hmm. So everyone thinks that I, I just started the fire and stood there with my my hands in my pocket. Uh huh. Well, it was <laughs> there's a lot there's a lot of gold in that video. I think like when I watch it, I think there's a part where you're like, well, I can't do anything about this. I only have one hand. <laughs> yeah, like I was I was out there stomping it with the rest of everybody, and uh, I lost my balance because I don't have that good a balance with only one arm, mm -hmm. and I was holding my breath at the same time because the wind shifted and blew all the smoke in our faces and I almost fell into the fire and they grabbed me and told me just to chill out. So in the video, you see me walking back from that, but you don't see the actual part yeah. where I almost fall in. All right, cool. So we're going to talk about that um, along with um, other videos that you have on your channel. We're also going to talk to Walter about going out to Knob Creek. Walter, you're going out to Knob Creek uh, yeah. Wednesday? Leave Wednesday, leaving. yeah. Yep, yep. Okay, but Knob Creek is actually which days? Uh, uh, Friday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So we're going to talk to, to Walter about that. We're going to have a nice discussion about Knob Creek. And you know what? We're gonna. There's still stuff going on with um, what happened in Las Vegas. 
the shooting, the unfortunate shooting there and people who lost their lives in that situation, as well as, you know, bookending that everything going on with the NRA, just opening the door for the uh, gun grabbers to come in. You know, NRA is trying to play Game of Thrones with uh, Democrats. Stupid idea. They are way ahead. They are like the little fingers <laughs> of playing, you know. I don't want to spoil anything yeah. for anyone. I know that didn't turn out 100% awesome for Littlefinger, but, you know, that's what's going on. Plus, I, I was doing, over this weekend, I was at the um, IB8888 Range Day, Iraq Veteran 8888. Yep. I went yep. to their Range Day. And um, I don't have video of this, but I, I can talk a little bit. There's questions. Well, I have video of us going out there. I've got to edit that and put it up, but I know some people had questions and different things they wanted us to do. And so we're going to talk about that, Knob Creek, 50% Tactical, all that kind of good stuff. I want to encourage everyone watching this video right now, click the thumbs up, click that thumbs up yeah. button. Yeah. You know, Boom. make sure you share this video with your friends and family on social media and all that good stuff. Make sure you're subscribed to the Hank Strain situation as well as 50% Tactical as well as Safety Harbor Firearms. Walter, you you do also have a YouTube page. Yes, I do. Yep, yep. Yes. Um, two of them, actually. So, yeah, Walter's got, uh, what is it, Mega Mower Death? Mower Death, yeah. Yeah, Mower <laughs> Death and um, Safety Harbor Firearms. Yeah. So we're going to talk about all that good stuff. Make okay. sure you guys click the thumbs up, though, and share this video, and then hit us up with your questions. I'm going to take a second here to go in and shout out everyone who's hanging out with us in the chat. If I miss you, um, please just hit me up with a roll call. Tango Hunter was the first in the chat, and his first words were lubricious. Lubricious. <laughs> lubricious. That was his word, first words. I don't know if, I mean, that's kind of like an inside thing. We'll explain that at some point. But <laughs> Tango Hunter was there. He's in the building. Chris Bullis also here. The Archangel. What's up? Let's see who else we have. E Rock. E Rock is here. Blazing 1212. You know, Blazing1212 is in the building as well. I'm trying to go through here and see who I'm missing. Um, the Range 1. Okay, so there you go. The Range 1. Um, and he, the Range 1 says Al Chervik has left the building and now I'm back. So I guess the Range 1 is Al Chervik, who's now the Range 1. Ah. So people are like, you know, having um, their tr he's trans name. Oh. Trans. He's trans name. We've got the Screaming Skull Saloon. Also, trans naming. Yeah, trans naming going on. Yeah, people not sticking with their names. Uh, Stomping You Customs, he's also in the building. We had him on last week. Mark Wagner is here as well. Ken Helmers is here. Um, let's, uh, Nick Graham gave us five bucks. Oh, He, he wants to know. Excellent. Yeah, Nick Graham has a question. He gave us five bucks, so I guess we got to answer this. He says, hey, Hank, what do you think about James Yeager defending the NRA stance on bump stocks? Well, I have no idea what James Yeager said yeah. about bump stocks. Um, I, you know, I don't know if you guys want to take this on right now. I, I don't know what James said, so it's I, I'm not really going to talk on what he said. I could try to look it up and come back to you. I know that um, Yeager has defended it. Um, Hickok 45 actually defended it also, and, and you know, no surprise to me, Colin Noir also defended it. And a lot of those guys are saying that, like, the NRA is thinking way above our heads. They're playing three-dimensional chess. They are geniuses, and we are idiots that know nothing. So we should just go along with what they say, and I do not agree with that. I think we do understand what exactly what they're doing here. And they're uh, – Walter, what the hell are you doing? Are you building something? Oh, you're putting something together. Well, there. well, okay. You keep talking, and we can talk about yeah. this in a okay. second. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I, I was just, you know, it sounded like spoons. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to slide. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. So, so the NRA. I probably. I, I don't know what Jaeger said, but the NRA, um, Hickok, those guys have things to say about this whole thing, and basically they're saying we don't get it, we don't understand. The NRA is 100 percent right here. They're thinking better than we are. <laughs> And I think that it's a dangerous game that they're playing. You know, they're opening the door to Democrats and, and Democrats are happy to have this door open. And to go further than that, I think there's Republicans 
in Congress that want gun control. They've been looking for cover. They've been looking for reasons to get out there and do gun control. And by the NRA signaling that they're willing to do this, this is a dangerous road to go down. If you're crazy enough in America to think that a bill is going to come up and specifically ban uh, bump fire stocks, then you really need to like get checked in, get a uh, CAT scan, MRI. <laughs> You know, there's something wrong with you mentally because that bill is not just going to have that. They're going to go. They're going to go against a whole bunch of stuff. Um, Wayne Lapierre was on Face the Nation. One of the reasons why I came on a little later here is because I was actually watching the whole video. There's a seven-minute video of Wayne P uh, Wayne Lapierre on Face the Nation. You guys can go look at that if you want to. But you know, basically in that video. He's saying that um, the NRA supports the ban against machine guns that came out in the 80s. So I've always been into guns and I've been around in the 80s, but I wasn't like in the in it like this. You were around in that time, right, Walter? Yeah, but I didn't have no money. Yeah. So <laughs> going back to the 80s, you used to be able to buy machine guns. And I don't think that uh, that everyone in the world was losing their life because people had machine guns. No, it had nothing to that. So what happened from your from your point of view? Uh, well, well was, wasn't it the Reagan thing that? that yeah, that Reagan. Sort of it was it was it was kind of a deal to get something else passed. They, he agreed to do that, in addition to getting what he wanted to get done. Right. So he kind of sold us out on that one. Yeah. You know, well, and, and, and so that's the danger that I think that we're facing here. We don't have machine guns now. The NRA supports the fact that machine guns are illegal. There's lots of us out there, me included, I would say that I think we should have machine guns. The NRA supports the that and Wayne LaPierre said as much, which is kind of weird because I see lots of dudes from the NRA shooting machine guns, including our friend Colin Noir, always out there shooting machine guns. But the NRA is actually against that. So I don't know what, what's you gotta, going on there. You gotta think about the machine gun game now today. It's, it's a rich man sport and a lot of guys have uh, invested a lot of money in those non-transferable stamps and it would they would lose money if that was reversed you know what i'm saying that's a good point that you're making but you know that the the flip side of that is that you know why shouldn't the rest of us that's like saying that only special people can buy a supercar now obviously you have to have money to buy a supercar it's expensive but you can be just a regular guy with a regular job and buy a supercar if you focus your whole life on that it yeah. might cost the price of a house, but you decide you're going to live at home with your mom, you know, <laughs> and uh, deal with everything that goes along with that. And you're going to buy a supercar. What yeah. that's what this thing is saying is only really, really special people should have these things. And um, I, I tend not to agree with that. So to take it further, what LaPierre was saying on Face the Nation is that there's a blurred line between semi-automatic and and fully automatic. And that's why the ATF and the Obama administration allowed slide fire stocks and that, that the NRA supports that line, that blurred line being defined. So there's lots of things that are living on that blurred line, not just slide fire, right? You've got um, triggers like the binary triggers that are out there or the, um, you know, pull, shoot, release, shoot triggers that exist, whatever that you want to call them. And there's various other triggers like, um, you know, there's reset, auto reset triggers. There's a bunch of different things that are out there. All those things could could come under this, you know, this. Um, Something as simple as a bipod could mm -hmm. come in. These people want to I'm talking to my son about it. And he goes, you know, any modifications of the gun? So a bipod. Come on, folks. Yeah. Bipod. Well, right now the NRA is saying that um, what what they're trying to do is offer up a, f a slide no. fire, right? And no. they think they're geniuses, and people think they're geniuses because a lot of us don't like. Have you ever shot slide fire, Walter? I have held one before. Yes. You've held one. Did you shoot it? Yeah, I shot it. Yeah. What yeah. did you think about it? Yeah, it's a gimmick. Care for it. So well, when, <laughs> when you have a real machine gun, you know it's like yeah. okay. Right. Yeah. So, Derek, <laughs> now I'm going to ask you if you've ever held one of these things. Yeah. I know this. I'm not laughing at you, my friend. You're my brother. I love you. But you yeah. are 50% tactical. You are only with one hand. Yeah. So. Uh, bump fire stocks really don't work for me, obviously. But uh -huh. uh, I, I see the, the fun in them, I guess. Me personally, if I had two arms, uh, 
we actually did this in the, when I was still in the army. Uh, we were messing around with bump fire, um, bump firing our M9s and our and our M4s on semi-auto, and uh, it was cool and everything. But you don't have the control and the the ability to to keep that keep those sights on the target as you would like a full, uh, an actual full auto. Okay, so, so you have done it before. You have bump fired. Not, oh yeah, but not during the time when these specific stocks have been out. Yeah, as before, so any anybody made an actual stock for it. This was just you know keeping my my hand and my my trigger finger still and just pulling forward on the rifle. Yeah, um, and just to probably define that for people, you haven't always like just been uh, you know one arm. You've ha you've had the use of both arms. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, do you ever talk about how you lost the other arm? Oh yeah. I mean, when people meet me for the first time, they see my my blue ID card, retired army, and they automatically think that it was uh, combat related, and it wasn't. And I kind of feel I feel guilty about that because when I was going through um, physical therapy and occupational therapy, I was going with it with guys that had the same exact problems, you know, the same, almost the same injury, but theirs happened because it was like an IED explosion, an RPG mm -hmm. or whatever. But mine was after my eighth deployment, I came back, we had to fix an helicopter, we had to fix a helicopter over the weekend. And we got, er we got done early on a Sunday morning and we decided to go make the, make the most of the weekend that we had. And we went to ride our bikes and I hit a tree on my dirt bike going like oh. 65 miles per hour. Wow. wow. Okay, so you were serving at the time, but you weren't yeah. on duty. Yeah. Okay. Why do you feel guilty about that, man? You you served your country, you know. Um, why do you it's, feel guilty that you got injured like off the battlefield versus on the battlefield? I don't know. It's it, it's really hard to explain. Like, I've had close calls before, whether I'm flying or whether you know it was indirect fire or actually direct fire from like a, a machine gun, but. Uh, yeah, it's, you, it's you, do you, is it that you feel it would have been more noble for you to have been injured, you know, you know on yeah, the battlefield they're, they're, versus like doing something crazy after work? You know? Yeah, it, it would have been yeah. it would have been worth it, I guess. Like just mm -hmm. just riding my bike doesn't think doesn't seem to me as that it was worth it, especially when I was going okay. through the occupational therapy with those guys that yeah. You know, I actually lost it in combat. So yeah, I no, I think I see where you're coming from, man. But you know, you still served your country. You know, and and how long were you in the army? Twelve years. Twelve years. Wow, man. You know, you put that's some serious time to put in. So I'm just curious. I'm just curious because I have no idea. What was the army's reaction to your injury, and how long did it take for them to, um, I like, show you the door? Well, they, my unit. Uh, the unit I, I belonged to was uh, Special Operations Aviation Unit, the 160th, and they they really took care of me after the accident. And uh, the Army at the time had a, a program called the Wounded Warrior Program, or um, not the Wounded Warrior. That's that. That's that charity place that doesn't right. really yeah. do anything. Yeah, it's anti-gun. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and all they do is take veterans out to uh, Dave and Buster's or go hunting, and that's it. And they take all this. Anyways, get them off that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there was I, some program that that the army that yeah. was within the army itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to transition guys that were you know obviously too injured to serve anymore in the in the duty capacity that they were before. So my unit, like that program, had a really bad reputation for not being the best so my unit did send me there so they kept me with them the whole time that uh i was doing my therapy and to see if i would get <clears throat> to see if i would get any more um movements or anything like that uh so the, the me medical board process took like a year and then after that they retired me okay all right well you know uh, I, I'm, it's a terrible thing that you lost the arm, but you know I, I'm still proud of you for serving your time. So I'm actually grateful I lost it. Really? Yeah. People look at me Crazy. weird when I say I'm glad I lost it, but mm -hmm. if I if I would have if I wouldn't have lost it, I would have done my time. Probably got got out around 12 or 15 years and contracted overseas, and who knows what would have happened. 
mm -hmm. you know, during that time. Uh, I wouldn't have my sons right now, probably. I see. Yeah. So, so you wouldn't you wouldn't rewind the clock and redo your life in a different way. I'd like to rewind the clock to just relive some stuff, but I would. <laughs> you know, I, I still would keep everything the same. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. You know. So I I know that's a little bit off the subject, but you know. Yeah. I mean, that's why you're here, man. I really want to talk to you and expose you to people because I think that you that you have a very unique perspective on this whole thing that we're doing. I like how you do what you do. I like the production and everything. So thank you. You know, and and you've been on before, but I feel like every time you've been on, there's always been, and now is not that different. But there's probably been a bunch of different people, and maybe people haven't right. really had a chance to hear from you. I have a question still now. Sure. Okay. Um, because I never spoke to anybody that was um that shoots guns and has one arm um the brace or the brace is do you use that type of stuff or or is that just you think i no. know it was i knew it was the, the premise that was come up for for someone just like yourself yeah but now it's not that in my opinion it's just a way to get around having it it is yeah, and, and and the funny thing is, I think the bump fire stock was actually approved originally because it was to help guys that don't have grip strength mm -hmm. to pull the trigger. So that's the reason why it was approved. I heard, and also the uh, the, the braces. The reason why they got approved is for guys that like me. You know, they need right. assistance. Me personally, I just use my cheek to push down on the stock and. The pistol grip is just the fulcrum, so it's just a simple lever. Okay. Okay. At that recce vet uh, eighty-eight eighty-eight shoot this past weekend, I tried to hold up a uh, M two forty, and it was just a little bit too heavy. Uh, just a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what a bipod's for, then. I mean, you know, you yeah. gotta get behind it with the bipod. Yeah. But then when I'm on the ground, I like lean. One one way because I can't like keep my oh. myself up. Yeah, okay. I mean I know we're we're way down on this tangent, but the thing the question that I think to ask you is what about some kind of um, prosthetic arm? You know, is that obviously they're out there? Are you not qualified for that because of the way you got injured or what's going on mm. there? No, I, I got a I got a prosthetic arm. I don't use it because it's it it hinders me more than it helps me. Okay. Because I don't, I had the uh, brachial plexus nerve branch rip, ripped from my spinal cord, so everything from my neck down is, is paralyzed. I have okay. no movement of my shoulder, so I just have to move my stump like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and if I have anything attached to it, it just pulls on my shoulder. Oh, and, I uh, see. Okay. It's really, they 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 asked me if I wanted a, a cool myoelectric hand, you know that that's. You know, like an Android hand, pretty much. And I told him I was like, no, because I really wouldn't use it, and it would be more of a hindrance than a help. So, so something like that would have to extend all the way to your shoulder as well, right? To give you movement in the shoulder. Is that what you're saying, or what they would have to do? They would probably have to take the rest of my arm because they amputated just above the, uh, yep. just above the elbow. So they would have to take my shoulder too, and then I'd be able to attach something that could move. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That makes sense. And you you're just not ready to get you know. I, I'll probably never get one. Okay. Unless they can come up with something like Will Smith had in iRobot, I I probably yeah. won't. We, we you know, yet. we could be we I think we're moving in that direction. Um, you know. Oh yeah. There's a lot of technological stuff yeah. with that. But at that point, my friend, you you know, you could well they, who knows what will be banned by then, but you'll be able to just <laughs> plug in a machine gun or something. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that would that'd be, be awesome. Yeah. 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 So if anyone has this technology or is developing it and they're looking for a crash test dummy, we got yeah. Eric. You know, <laughs> let us know. We'll let him do it. So the thing is, we got off on this tangent, but the reason why I asked you guys about it is most people don't like the slide fire. You know, I've, I've shot it before. Um, we, we actually have one right now I you know I've not ever done videos on it and the thing and I'm gonna talk a little bit about the whole video thing with that uh, soon but people don't really like it so I think the NRA believes like hey this is a good sacrificial lamb that we can give up 
And in exchange for giving up this thing that people don't really like anyway, according to them, because I'm sure, I guarantee you, there's people out there who do like this and who it does something for them. So I'm not saying everyone, but maybe they felt like, oh, this is an easy thing to give up. Plus, as he's saying in his statement, you know, they think machine guns should be illegal. And they also believe that this line that's, shouldn't be that's, blurred. That's really where, it, where he really, they're just screwed up. Thinking yeah. they should be illegal. I mean, it's yeah. Well, yeah. so I think what Nick wanted to know, and we, we we you know, it's a long answer, but I think what Nick wanted to know is what do I think about it? I can't tell you what I think specifically about what Jaeger said. Jaeger says a lot of stuff, and most of the time he's you know, I I personally believe he's saying it to uh, to engender support and and more views and all that kind of stuff. I get it. That's how the game is played, right? If it bleeds, it leads. So you got to be controversial and get up there and say things. Um, but but what I think is the NRA really opened the door to Democrats and even Republicans that are planning on um, defecting and, and bringing in some kind of gun control. And we really, really have to be careful with that because we could, like, I know no one believes this, but we could very quickly overnight get legislation that passes through all the, you know, the, through Congress and um, the Senate and everything and actually lands on the president's desk. And it's not just going to be this one passageway that says, um, you know, slide fire stocks are no longer legal. It's not going to be that because, yeah. first of all, that alone isn't going to solve anything. People can make this stuff. Derek said that he did it when they were in the army. Lots of people. You could do this with your belt, with all kinds it's of stuff. You don't even need a, anything. to. You to could do it with fire. rubber bands. I've seen videos of guys doing it with rubber bands. So it's going to extend. And then let's say, OK, it extends now into binary triggers and things like that. Well, that could that could very easily spread, and the next thing you know, you've killed a whole industry. But 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 Democrats won't stop there, and they've come out and they've said that that it won't stop there. And then the NRA is putting forward like, oh, and then maybe you should give us fifty state reciprocity. Like there's some kind of geniuses, and Democrats are going to be so stupid and ban only the slide fire, and then we'll all get fifty state reciprocity. They're not going to give anything. Yeah, and suppressors are going to come off the NFA. And Bullshit. None of that is happening. I don't think they have any intentions of doing that. They're going to take this opening, go in, put something in there, and, and, and a, a bill can actually, a law can actually wind up on the desk of the president, and he could easily sign it right now because he's got no victories. Yeah. You know, and who says he won't sign it? Because they go, look, well, if you if you well, sign this yeah. thing, we'll give you some kind of tax reform. We'll let you do something with health care. You'll get a victory. But really, they're going to get a massive victory, and they're not going to pass up this opportunity to do that. So what I think about it is that for everyone trying to tell me, like Colin Noir is trying to tell people that the NRA is geniuses and we should just go along with them. Well, obviously, Colin Noir is paid by the NRA. And, to, you know, I mean, let's be real. He's paid yeah. by the NRA. He's going to say that. I get it. And But I think it's bullshit. And um, anyone else that's coming out and supporting it, like Hickok or Jaeger or whatever, I think you're making it. You're making a huge mistake to support that and give reasons to the Republicans out there that are defecting. Because what really should happen is if the NRA knows that these guys are thinking about defecting and other people know that these guys are thinking about defecting, they should let us know so that we could put it out in the world and, and let everyone know that these guys are not Second Amendment people and put pressure on them and either get them back into line or, you know, get rid of them altogether. So. Yeah. I think there should be term limits, but. Well, yeah, I mean, of hell yeah, there should be term limits. You know, I think lots of laws that exist in America why am need I, to get revisited and we need to I, clean these things up, but, you know. Why am I still looking at that a, 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 ugly Nancy Pelosi and all these ugly other people that, <laughs> that were there with the assault weapons ban the first time and all are screaming and crying about this, that, and the other, and, and uh, you know, why are these people still around? They, yeah. they're, still, they're not any, well, they don't, smart is not, it's not about being smart. None of because if they, if they really were interested in, in changing, making life better for Americans, they would start yeah. there with this stuff that we're talking about. Yeah. There would be term yeah. limits. There would be more <laughs> serious penalties for, for congressmen, senators, uh, public, pol political officials who betray us, who steal, who do all kinds of things. There would be, yeah. there, there would be, um, 
you know, they would actually suffer for doing this stuff instead of just being able to retire and still get all these benefits. Yet America, Americans have worse health, worse health care. You know, those of us who work and create industry and stuff like that, we pay all the taxes and we carry the burden. All those things would get fixed, but they don't want to do that. You know, instead, what they want to do is take away something from us that's guaranteed in the Constitution. Yeah. I didn't shoot anybody myself, so why should I be penalized? Yeah, I'm seeing more and more people posting stuff on Facebook and, and social media, like how the Second Amendment is irrelevant in this day and age because we don't have to worry about the, the British Empire anymore. I'm like, are you, are you, tell it, tell that to, <laughs> yeah, go tell ahead, that, tell that to somebody that lived in Rhodesia. Yeah, or tell that to somebody that lives in some of these other shithole countries where they where the some dictator takes over, and next thing you know, they're 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 stealing all their stuff and running them out of the country. Yeah. Um, you know, um, ask, a, ask, ask a, any Japanese you happen to know from World War II why they didn't invade the U.S. They'll Tell that you. to the people of Syria that the government, their government turned yeah. against them. Syria is a clusterfuck. You know, tell that to people in Argentina. Yeah, yeah I mean. You know, there's lots of people that you can, um, there's lots of countries. Now, here's the problem, I think, with Americans. And I'm going to get, people have a bunch of comments coming up. Uh, keep the comments coming up. I want to remind everyone to click the thumbs up and share this video and all that. You know, let's let's uh, spread the word that we're having this conversation. The thing I want to, the thing I think that happens to a lot of Americans is they become very complacent when it comes to rights like this because... You're in America and it's a nice, soft, cushy, safe world most of the time, right? And you don't remember that all the rest of the world is happening around you. Yeah. And you think, oh, that's just happening over in some third world country. I'll never have to deal with that. Well, tell that to everyone that lived through Katrina in Louisiana. Yep. Because all of a sudden like that, um, a place in America became a third world country in, in bad times. And the people who lived there saw it happening. They saw their government, uh, police officers even turn against them. Um, it, it, it became a crazy thing. So I think that that can't happen in America. Hell yeah, it could happen in America. And what's happened, this is what the whole progressive movement is about. It's about instead of like trying to push this on Americans, because we're going to, if you try to push anything on us big time, we're going to push back immediately. So this is exactly what the, this is why the Democrats were looking for this just little tiny crack. For us to say, oh, no, yeah, these these this slide fire thing, we don't believe in it. And they're going to take that crack and open it up wide and step all the way through that. You know, I think it's funny that this happened right as the Sure Act was gaining steam. Oh, no, that sounds like a conspiracy to me. Uh, yeah. I'm not I'm not one of those people that say there is multiple shooters or anything like that. Because no, no, but I've, I've heard that same thing. Well, all of a sudden, the. Uh, the suppressor thing gets shelved by Ryan and there's this, all this goes on and it's like, eh. yeah. Yeah. So I I'm, think I'm the, big, the biggest thing that really befuddles people is they don't know why. And there's no clear answer. And, and, and more there's longer, there's no clear answer. The longer the, the, the conspiracies theories, and yeah. the stories and the 15 yeah. shooters and there's Muslims running from the scene and all this stuff. It's like, Oh, come on. you'd be running too. If, if somebody was shooting at you from the top of the building, yeah, I mean, yeah, and it's just silly stuff, you know. It's just in it, but hey, he yeah, was so, off. He was he was off the grid. It looks like and off the grid for real, and and people don't. Yeah, know what I, to do. ultimately, I don't think it matters why he did it. I mean, He's I know we're all, I know we're all caught up in that. Like, why did this guy do this? You know, was it a conspiracy? Was it was it Antifa? Was it ISIS? <laughs> you know, did did the CIA set this up? You know, is Hillary Clinton out there? making some shit happen was this guy was this guy dying who the hell knows why he did it it doesn't matter there's people who are dead that's irreversible well you know they so, always take advantage of a crisis that's the democratic way of doing things you know they can't they can't get anything done normally so they wait till people get killed and then they jump yeah. in and, and start using that as an excuse yeah. well I, so, go ahead no i mean i just I don't know. It's just hard to it's not, it's hard to explain. I mean, you know, it's um, yeah. you got a bunch of spineless people in Washington that that, that don't have that no spine. You know, they don't care. You know, whatever way the wind blows, they go. Woo! Yeah, let's go this yeah. way. Ooh, let's go that way. I don't want to lose my big my big job here. You know, it's like okay, whatever. 
But, I don't think it's I don't think it's just what whichever way the wind blows. I think these people yeah. have a deliberate agenda. I think the people in Washington, the people in power have a deliberate agenda. And but they're doing it on our backs. It's a lot like the NRA. The NRA has an agenda. The well, people on the top of the NRA, almost like a pyramid scheme. There's dudes up there on the top, a few people, and they have an agenda. They know what they want to do, but they're they're um, everything that they have, the private jets, the you know, the chauffeured cars, all the nice hotel rooms. The armed and, security guards. Yeah. All the awesomeness that those and I'm talking about the NRA, not politicians. All the awesomeness they have. Well, what, is are awesome. the, what what are the NRA top guys? They're politicians. Yeah. yeah. And they're doing it on the back of the five million people who pay them, who are you know, I, life members or pay them every year. As soon as I heard this reciprocity garbage, we're gonna somehow get reciprocity pulled through and you know, maybe sell the bump fire down the road or whatever. That's a politician my friend yeah yeah yeah, yeah. you're not going to get reciprocity the leftists are not going to agree to that i don't care what you give them they're not and the gonna funny thing is it. is that you would you would think that most like when the nra did this you would think that they got together with with different people and had a consensus and went through <laughs> the organization and different people in the organization they would talked about it and maybe they were like someone was there representing you the little guy yeah. But what you wanted, no, no, that's not the way it happened. There's a few people that made a decision. Most of those people were thinking about like the, the, the actually the PR people and a couple of people on top, obviously LaPierre well, and Cox put at, their name to it. And they made this decision without, without thinking of what the rest of us would care about it. Just like they decided to, to, to say that they were going to uh, support Trump without you know, asking let, us. Let's, let's ask Pete Brown knows what he thinks about it for real. He's got a lot to lose. If they if they go after this accessory thing, which is what they want to do, forget about the bump stock. They want way more than the bump stock. They want yeah. you know you, you can't put a scope on the gun, you can't put a bipod on the gun, you can't look cross eyed at the gun. That's how he makes all his money. Yeah, yeah, he's, but I think he it's, sell, I, I, he sells accessories. He's right. not making it from selling sanding paper to fix your stock. Sure, and it's not just Brownells. There's lots of companies. There's a company. They, they don't Brownells. manufacture these things. They sell the things that people manufacture. So, but where is I, he? You know that's what I'm saying. I know right. you. Your question is where's where's Pete Brownell? Yeah, where, where's the big thing? the guy that was going to save the planet? Yeah, well, I think that Brownells put <laughs> out a statement, and I think what you're talking about is obviously like Mac was here on the show, and he said that Pete Brownell is president of the NRA now, and um, you know, and we should give time. But Mac has reversed his position with the NRA, and for and and I know like at this. Um, at this IV 8888 thing that I went to, uh, Brownells was there, Pete Brownell was there. I, I'm not gonna speak for for them. I think they put out statements and they said that they're not, they don't support what the NRA did. Basically is what they're saying in their statement, right? That they support the second amendment as it's written, right? And, and that's what they believe in. Um, and my feeling on it, my feeling, I'm not speaking for any of those guys. I think those people are fully capable of speaking for themselves. My feeling on it is they feel the same way that we do, that they were caught off guard, that they probably didn't know this was happening until it was already happening, you know, and now they're in the middle of it and they have to deal with just like us. I mean, we've been here I've, as long as I've been on YouTube, I've been trying to support the NRA. I've been trying to support all these people, but they never they never talk to us when they do these things. If you go back to when um, they just kicked out the um, USCCA from the NRA <laughs> annual well, meeting. Was, they didn't want any competition. That's why they did that. Yeah, but that's still, okay, I, I get the competition in the business thing, but they did this thing like two days before the actual meeting. You know, so that tells you that they never thought about what they're doing. If they would have done it six months before that or three months before that, then that would have been one thing. But we're just about to have an annual meeting of gun people who support the Second Amendment. And they tell a company who has been to this meeting all the time, who's for the Second Amendment, who's been helping people. Guess what? We're getting into the same business as you. So screw you. We're not supporting you anymore. And, I, and I'll tell you a, a personal story for me. Um, I, we've, I think we've been doing this now for somewhere between four and five years, right? So going back to my first SHOT Show, when I went to that show, I was going out to Media Day, which is where, you know, people in the media go on a range and we get to shoot stuff. And I got into that and I was going out there. Um, Lola didn't, we didn't fill out the paperwork properly, so Lola, Lola couldn't go. So I got on a bus 
at the uh, convention center to go out there. On this bus were all these writers. So up until that time, or maybe a year or so before that time, this whole gun world when it came to media was all about the print guys, right? The writers. So when I got on the bus, there were all these writers and they were like, okay, what, what do you do? And I was like, oh, I'm a YouTube guy. So they surrounded me and they started asking me all these questions because they were worried about us YouTube guys, right? They, they knew they were losing ground to us. Yeah. And now after this, so I met a couple of these guys and I actually like started, you know, they were asking me a lot of questions. I was talking to them. I guess we had some kind of rapport and there was one guy in particular that I was talking to and there was a meeting after this that the, that the um, NRA had at SHOT Show. Right. They had some kind of meeting with all these writers, but I, I don't know if there were any YouTube people there. There might have been a few of the like the upper crust, dare I say, <laughs> of uh, gun YouTubers, but I wasn't there. So I asked this guy when I saw him on the show floor, like, what the hell was that meeting all about that the NRA just had last night? And he said it was about you guys. It was about the 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 YouTubers. And I said, well, what about the YouTubers? And he told me that they're trying to figure out how to control you guys. Huh. And I was and, and I was like, well, why do they want to control us? Because and they don't they don't have because you're just for the same reason we're doing what we're doing right now. Yes. They wanted to stop what's happening right now. Now, a few months after this is when you saw like Colin Noir and a bunch of other people all of a sudden they are miraculously with the NRA. And that's awesome. I'm not knocking it. But this is this is a huge part of what's going on right now. These people don't really care what we think. They weren't concerned. They didn't say, hey, let's get these YouTube guys here and figure out, you know, they're they're like people are paying attention to them. Let's figure out what we can do for those guys. You know, they, they didn't take any time. They, they were just concerned, like, how the hell do we control these guys? Because they could be dangerous right now. The writers are losing ground to them because people want to watch. Yep. These people, they connect to us and our personalities. Well, they want to see what we're doing. You know what it's about? It's about money. Watch the print. The printed magazine is one by one falling to the wayside. And, you know, then they lose the NRA loses their their voice or their uh, way to get their message out. Because they they just like I said, they're just now getting into the Internet thing, I, you know, which I kind of find it hard. But a lot of old guys, I guess, in the NRA. Yeah. Well, and I, think, and I think the reason I think it is about the money. Yes. Everything ultimately is about the money. I mean, I've, I've heard pr proposed that the NRA said what they did so they can start get the fundraising money coming in or something again, because it's been slow since Trump got elected. Yeah. But why would we support the NRA when they're when they're deconstructing all these things? The NRA, NRA was around when machine guns came like became oh, illegal. Yeah. Right. And it's not what people don't understand about stuff becoming illegal. This is just like taxes. People think let's tax, let's up taxes because then the rich guys, they're going to pay a lot of taxes and then this will all be solved. And it never does that. It never does that. They're never, the people in Congress are rich guys. Yep. They're never going to make laws that they pay taxes. They're going to make laws where they don't pay taxes. So the rich guys are always going to have enough money to not pay taxes. The people who are going to pay taxes is us. And it's the same thing with making machine guns and lots of other stuff illegal. It's not going to stop the rich guys. It's not going to stop the elites in the world from having it. It's going to stop us from having it because we won't be able to afford to do it. The problem is the NRA can have access to machine guns. I've seen them doing this stuff. If they're really against machine guns, then they shouldn't fucking have machine guns in any of their videos. But they want to be awesome and they want to show you how awesome they are. So they have machine guns. It takes it takes more nowadays for people to have machine guns. And I understand that. And like, Walter, you're a guy. You've got machine guns. I'm not knocking you. Well, I'm, a, it, I'm, it, a, I'm a class, too. I don't have any transferable guns. Yeah. And it but it, and it also costs you a shit ton of money to do it. Right. I mean, obviously, you have a business and you have right, to run right. that. Business. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, you know. <laughs> It's not even you that I'm talking about. It's right. the guys who have so much money that they could just set up an infrastructure, have these things, and then normal people can have access to it. And this blurred line that they're talking about is the normal guy. It's the regular guy where if he wants to have fun and go out there and shoot for fun, he can have triggers that are not, they're not machine guns 
but they're close. They simulate, they come, you know, they bring you somewhere into that fun zone of where you can shoot this thing. And because this guy, because this guy went out there and did something horrible using, you know, using uh, slide fire, they're like, oh, this is a genius moment to go in there and this will never spread. This won't get into other things. But of course it will. Yeah, First of all, you right. cannot stop it. You can't st you, you can't stop people from having these things because someone if, if some it's already out of the bag. You could take a can't you take a regular AR and make it full auto? Uh, unsafe full, full auto, yeah. Easily. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So that you know it, that's not legal. You know so, go yeah, ahead. You can you can turn a lever action thirty thirty into a machine gun. I'm sure you can, right? Yeah, it was it was it was done by Winchester way back in the day. And it's really simple, actually. Um, it's kind of scary to shoot, probably, but it's it's real simple. Um, so yeah, anything can be modified, you know. And and if you look at other countries, that's what happens. Yeah, the, but, the places where all this restrictive gun stuff is, they still have guns. They still they make guns, you know. Yeah. You know, law I think that's why I think ultimately, um, and I know someone here was saying that what I I don't know. I guess Jaeger said that all of this stuff is making people think about this. Okay, I think that's true. I think we're all thinking about it, but that doesn't necessarily help the NRA. It's a stupid move on their part because what yep. we're doing is looking at them and saying, "Oh, wait a second, these guys are not on our side." I don't represent. They're, them. Um, yeah, they're not. Yeah, they don't represent us. They're not coming to us, and it's because they're not going to suffer. They're still going to have access to stuff, right. and we're not going to have access to it. It's going to become difficult for us if you can't. You know what? Right now, that the I mean, this is probably giving a bump up in the AR market or in the gun market in general, right? People are buying stuff. They're buying triggers. They're buying slides, slide fire if they can. They're buying guns to some extent. But before this happened, you know, the market was down. And what were people buying? They were buying accessories, things that they could right. modify their guns. Right, right, right. That's right. what the masses were buying, right? Yeah. So people were, like, able to go out there. If you, if, you know, you can't afford this um, SBR, you can get a pistol brace and, you know, you can have something similar <laughs> oh, yeah. to an SBR. You can't yeah. afford a machine gun. You can get this thing. And so you're the regular guy, but you can have this enjoyment. And that's who they're attacking. And they never stop to think about it. So, yes, it could be genius, uh, the stupid kind of genius on their part, because it's not going to help them. Because I think the, the regular guy is starting to understand that the NRA is not really for them. It's really an elite organization that does whatever the hell they want to. They have their own agenda that's not our agenda. And Lola put up this question here. She said, if you don't support the NRA, then who do we support? Right. You know, and it's a good question. Like, who um, do you support? Do you support, you know, gun owners of America? Do you support the USCCA instead? Yeah, there's lots of different options out there. It yeah. doesn't have to be. I'm not saying the NRA should go away and disappear tomorrow. But maybe we should stop supporting it if they've stopped a long time ago listening to us. Yeah. I, I, I was thinking here, somebody posted something about it all on the thing here um, that, that, um, sorry about that, that um, um, LaPierre is like Putin. How so? He's just, well, he's the big boss, you know, and he does what he wants. And he's got Brownells and some of these other underlings just to um, be the, you know, it's, I don't know how to say it. Why, how, how does LaPierre, how he's been, he's been doing that a long time, right? I mean, he's been in that. Yeah, there's no, ter there's obviously no you, term limits inside the yeah, NRA. You, <laughs> maybe it's time for some new top, top, top. That's list. why you don't see them pushing these Republicans that they have their ear to make term limits. Why it won't, it's not, you know, term limits is a thing we're not going to have happen either. No. But yeah, they're definitely, you know. <laughs> it's like, hey, I, I'm tired of well, you know what? I shouldn't be blogging anymore. I'm we're gonna quit tomorrow. You no, know, mm -hmm. that's what I say. You think the, the senator is not gonna do that? He's got such a no. sweet. Yeah, they, they, so, they go in there poor and they come out millionaires. So yeah. So Lola's telling me what she wants to know is who you, Derek and Walter. Who would you guys give your support to if not the NRA? Uh, Gunners of America is pretty active. They file a lot of. Uh, I think that's the outfit. They do a lot of lawsuits and stuff. I've got a lot of stuff turned yeah. around. Yeah, there's also gun rights across America. There's Jewish gun owners too, which is a yeah. That's a pretty yeah. smart group if you think about there it. There is, I think, I think the USCCA. <laughs> since, since look, here's what I think. I hey, think reason, we, the reason why I said that about Jewish gun owners, mm -hmm. I have a brother-in-law that happens to be Jewish, and he's vehemently anti-gun. 
And I don't know how you can be Jewish and be anti. Yeah. What what's happened to the Jews through history? They're the um, kicking they're the kicking boys for every throughout yeah, but, time, you know. So you got how can you be black? I mean, how can you be a black man and be anti gun? Can I answer that? I'll answer that since I can't speak on the Jewish thing, but I can speak on the black thing. What people don't realize is slavery happened not because a white guy went to Africa and no, kidnapped of, all and these the Africans. Brothers sold them. That's why the Yes, Africans. Africans, black people believed in selling other people. Right. Not all black people believe that. Not all Africans believe that. But there were Africans who believed that. And yep. Africans supported that. If you look at the story of Shaka Zulu, Shaka Zulu did not believe in that. And, and that's what he fought for and what he died for. And, you know, this, so this is how it happens. So it's the same thing here. You know, there's black people who believe in gun control. I do not believe right. in it, partly because <laughs> I am a black guy. I mean, you how know, can you, that, I, that's why I said, how can you, how can you, how can you do that? I mean, you know, it's, but anyways, do you don't, you don't think coming. there were Jews who um, cooperated with the Nazis? Oh, sure. You don't think there were Jews that were complicit in other Jews, um, sure. you know, going to gas try chambers? To, try to save their ass? Yes, sure. Of course there were. Yeah. I mean, so that's how it happens. Look, yeah. right now, like people mention this in the chat. I know probably the people in the chat feel like we're not paying attention because we're having this, this heated conversation. I think it's a good thing. But and I am paying attention to you guys, though. And there's people which I brought up this fact. Uh, I brought this up um, last week. Um, there's people out there who are aborting children at a higher rate than these people who died. So you had like 58 people sure. died. But how many children, how many unborn babies are dying every day from abortions? Right, right. No, no, no big deal. Way right. over 58. <laughs> More than 10 times 50, you know, that. Right. Right, right, right. But the people that support abortion don't qual. they don't, uh, they don't think of the fetus as a person that has the rights <laughs> yet. So that's how they like. They justify it. it. Yeah, that's just crazy, though. Life. They don't think that's life. But those but a lot of those same people think that an egg is life. So they don't. So they're vegetarians and they don't eat eggs. Yeah. Well, right? some of, because uh, they think yeah, that egg right, is yeah. life. Yeah, there right? you go. You got the, you got the leftist who uh, who doesn't eat meat and doesn't do this, but supports abortion, right? Yeah, figure that so, one out. Well, yeah. so that's the thing that I'm trying to say to you. Those, so we're t if we're talking about the destruction of human beings, and there's other human beings that say no, it's okay to destroy a human being inside the womb, right? The most vulnerable part, part life part of life for a human being is, is when you are alive inside the womb. The minute that that egg hits, that sperm hits that egg, that's life. <laughs> Whether you like it or not, right? right, right that right, sperm right. is alive, that egg is alive. But it's my body and I can do yeah. what I want so to So the thing is, is yeah, but there's a mass genocide going right. against those things. Well, there's so massive destruction of life and this is destruction of life. Those two, these two things are not separate. You can't say this is destruction of life over here, but this one isn't because they both are. And on top of that, the, these people, you know, I don't think it's, I think it's a horrible thing that these people don't exist anymore, but they don't exist anymore. So now we're gonna change the rest of the world and we're and all gonna give it, up our security and our safety them, for people yeah. who don't exist anymore. It don't fix them not being here by taking away my rights. No. Yeah. So how, so like we're, like we're gonna do all of this for those people who are not here anymore, but back here, these people say, yeah, but when you're inside the womb, you're not mm -hmm. here either. <laughs> well, yeah. right. There's so, no like, this has to be this has to be clear cut, and these aren't the conversations that people are having. They're yeah. just saying, like Jimmy Kimmel's just saying, you, you know, the Republicans need to pray because you know they're right. responsible for these 58 people that died, and and still hundreds of people who were injured. Yet over a thousand human lives are aborted. Most of them, people that look like me. Yeah. Well, are you praying every for day? Are you praying for all those people in the big cities that are killed every weekend? Or every day. Yep. If you add that up, if you add up the people that are dying in Chicago, in so Chicago, Chicago, Detroit, New Orleans, blah, 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 it goes on yeah. and on and on. It's way, way, way. It's like three or four thousand a year, something like that, yeah. isn't it? Go yeah. ahead, Derek. When it comes to Chicago, that's something that I brought up to a friend uh, a couple of days ago after this uh, mass shooting in Las Vegas. It's like, okay. After Vegas, they brought up all these mass shootings supposedly that happened. They kind of left out San Bernardino. They left out, you know, some of the ones that were the, you know, Islamists that did it or whatever. But they bring up all these uh, uh, mass shootings. Well, what constitutes a mass shooting? How many? How many needs to be shot or die or injured to, make it to mass. be? Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, so what I did is I went, I, I searched like all day a couple of days ago to, to try and find a, a source. I couldn't find it. A source that, w- that would tell me like individually, like a, in a weekend in Chicago, 50 people will get shot or mm-hmm. like 60 people will get shot. Oh, I wanted to know specifically like in each shooting, was there like multiple people in one shooting? I couldn't find it. I mean, I know that there are, but I, I know it's not just, you know, one-on-one every single every single shooting in Chicago. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, no. I mean, it's, it's once but again, it's not- that doesn't fit the narrative. No. Chicago, all those major, that doesn't, because who's killing each other? Yeah. But the narrative is double speak. Like, um, just, and just to show you guys that I'm listening, Eric Garcia says everyone should pray. And that's a good point. You know, these guys, like uh, you have a person saying people should pray and they don't even believe that in praying. <laughs> You know, but you should pray, though. And that's yeah. the thing that I'm trying to say to you about this game that people are, pray, you know, playing here, that the Democrats are playing. They don't believe in any of this. Yeah. You know, they're it's saying an opp- like, it's an opportunity. They use they use those dead people like a Trojan. Yeah. You know, use them till they can't get anything else out of the deadness. And then they're off to another another tragedy. You know? yep. Yeah. So I think that, you know, I mean, we got into this long thing, which I think we've been going for an hour talking about it because people want to know what I think about this. I think it's a massive mistake to open this door. And and, and and lots of people don't think this could happen. But I think in the next couple of days, in the next couple of weeks, you can literally wake up and find out that there was a bill that in the middle of the night went through the House, went through the Senate, you know, wound up on the president's desk and he signed that shit. And it's too late now. It's a law. So it doesn't matter if you go, well, we're never going to vote for Trump anymore and we're going to vote these guys out of office. We've now created another law that we can't get rid of. And we are right now in the midst trying to change Obamacare laws that are that are those are killing people, too. Those are those are doing that's doing bad stuff. And we can't even fix that. And and Republicans are men. They control the House and the Senate and they can't do shit. They're, They're nutless wonders. Yeah, they're sitting around <laughs> waiting. Remember, they, remember, for the last couple of weeks, I've been telling you guys that these guys could do whatever they want today or tomorrow, but they're sitting around waiting. Why? This is what they're waiting for. Why are like I, I told you before? Why are we negotiating or supposed to be talking or, or, or like asking permission from people who aren't in charge? The Democrats don't run the show. We run the show, and or the Republicans run the show. And why are you? Why do you have to deal with them? But Just that's do what it, I'm trying. No, do what, what you I'm want, to, Walter. The Republicans are not on our side. Well, that's well, the point I'm okay, making. Well, to that's, you. well, that's kind of where I'm leading to here. You know, I mean, they've been waiting for this. Here they, they are right they're here not they, on our side. They, they don't want to do. They don't want to do this. Don't believe that they want to do this. They 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 they, they don't want to give us reciprocity. Well, I they agree. don't want to give us uh, suppressors off the the NFA. They don't want it. Immediately as this happened, Paul Ryan pulled the thing. They're just waiting. They're just waiting for an excuse, waiting for a reason. They know. Give it time. Something will happen. Another <laughs> disaster will come up, and we'll use that as cover. We want. They want gun control. I'm pretty sure Paul Ryan wants gun control. These guys want this stuff. They want yeah. to cut back on this because they don't have the fear that we have. They don't have to defend themselves. Somebody else defends them and their families. You know. We well, have to defend ourselves. And and a lot of them, like, you know, I forgot the name of the congressman right now, but the guy who was caught up on that baseball field, he's yeah. still with us. Yeah. You know, because he knows. He understands yeah. that. You know, and I agree with the fact that in a situation like what went down in Las Vegas, there's not a lot you can do. I mean, look, if unless you had a rifle with a really good scope on it and you could figure out where that gunfire is coming from, there's not a lot you can do except save yourself in that situation. But ultimately, you know, people were able to push back against this guy. And and you know what? Honestly, I really believe that if this guy, this guy did not need Sly Fire. He did not need Sly Fire. fire. (laughs) Yeah. He had so many guns, he could have had just a regular trigger, and he could have done more damage. The Sly Fire probably avoided more damage happening because it didn't work right. Yeah. They, don't, it, it, they don't work right, um, you know. So um, I, yeah. I keep, people keep telling me I need to run for president. So you know, I, I I don't have no money. I don't got I don't got a Trump money, and I can't be beholden to nobody else. So no. 
Yeah, it's a tough it's a tough thing, but someone has to do it and we have to be able to put people in there that we could really trust. I think that's the that's how you've gotten oh, that's how you got Obama for 8 years. Because uh, well, the Republicans uh, were going up. The people that were going up against Obama, you had McCain and you can see what I I went and voted for McCain. Oh, well, right? what choice you have? Yeah. And I yeah. voted for Romney. Oh, but, sure. Uh, Ron Paul. Yeah, but I, know, but I mean, in the end, when it came time to vote, there was no there was no second choice. Yeah, so. yeah because they're not putting up Republicans are not putting up strong candidates that we can get behind. And that's yeah. why they've lost us. And that's how you wind up getting, you know, that's how Trump wound up in this in this position. But I'm not 100 percent with Trump because, I mean, Trump, he did the. If you really go back to the timeline here. Trump did the first signaling, and then all these other guys started signaling stuff. You know, Trump was the first one to say that, yeah, you know, we're going to have this conversation, the gun control conversation. You know, he, he's, the, he's the one that opened the door, and then these other guys went in behind him, and the NRA is just, the one, is just now coming on the tail end of that. And if you really want to keep, if you really want to keep these rights as you know them right now, you might be old enough to remember, you know, when you were a little freer than this back in the 80s. But this th this thing is going to keep getting tighter. And, you know, th what we have to do is try to push back against it. What I'm trying to do is stop that. You know, I would like to see a lot of laws that exist get rolled back, to be honest with you. But the more important to me is that they don't put in more gun control laws. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, so. we'll see what happens. Yeah, so that's that's that. I know we we dug in. <laughs> we wore this one out again. We so. dug in on that one. So okay, so let's uh, let's pivot here. <laughs> let's talk about some other stuff because we're gonna have you're gonna see what's coming in the days and weeks to talk about this. Um, so Derek, what's going on in your channel, man? What kind of videos? I know you were building a three hundred eight. Well, I wasn't building a three-way. I was building a six-five Grendel. Oh, okay. Oh. So there you go. I stand corrected. What what yeah. were you what were you building? Tell us about that. Well, I started a, a video series, a precision rifle video series, and I start off with the way I build my rifles, and I give guys little tips and tricks on, you know, how I do things and and the logic and reasoning behind the way I build rifles. And uh, I did a 6.5 Creedmoor that uh, turned out pretty nice. Uh, and what I'm doing right now is I'm kind of like trying to compare barrels. I, I got a Christian okay. Christian Arms carbon fiber wrap barrel, and I got, a, I, I got a Lilja st uh, stainless steel fluted barrel. Yeah, I noticed you like the high-end stuff, my friend. <laughs> I, yeah. You're a little bit elite when it comes to that. <laughs> well... <laughs> Being a machinist, I mean, I I know what quality and in that you can you get what you pay for with some things, not all things, but with some now. things. Okay, okay. So yeah. you like the finer things, but that's the machinist in you. Now, are you trying to like you know like how do we get these finer things, but on a budget or how how do you yeah. approach it? I, what I'm doing is I, I, I'm I'm comparing them to let guys know like. When it comes to carbon fiber or composite barrels, are they worth it? Mm -hmm. Like, gonna... the, does the carbon fiber wrap barrel uh, perform better than the, the just the stainless steel barrel? Is it the quality of the barrel that that matters? Is it the you shooter? Know? Yeah, is, is it the, the shooter? Are you yeah. a good enough shooter to take advantage of that carbon wrap barrel? I mean, that, I, that I, kind I think, of thing. I think I was in the past, and I no, I but still I'm not, not about you, not you, but I mean the average the other the other oh, guy out yeah. there that might be, yeah. No, not yet. Yeah, and, and when it comes to the carbon fiber wrap barrel thing, I'm actually making a video producing it on, yeah. on the three different types that I actually own. It's a, the, I have a proof barrel, a, a, the Christian Arms barrel, and I have the new BSF barrel. Okay, so now we're getting some questions. I'm going to let you continue with that. I want to remind everyone watching to click the thumbs up, share this video. We're getting into we're you know getting into some different stuff here. So people want to know what's your channel, 50% Tactical. I just I just put it in the chat, and it's also in the description. But can you tell folks out there how they find your channel, your YouTube channel? Oh uh, yeah, it's uh, YouTube slash, I think it's Fitty percent or Fitty. Yeah. That's that's it. I just well, I just I just typed in Fitty well, Tactical and it pops right. Yeah, up. if you if you go to the um, search box and you type in Fifty Tactical, you'll find it. But you, your user is actually T F B L K H W K G U I. So it looks like yeah. 
yeah. TF Blackhawk guy. Yeah, that that's from my time in the army, the task force Blackhawk. Oh, okay. Chief. Yeah, yeah, stuff like that. Were yeah. you um, speaking of that? Were you based in Hilbert Field? No, I was. The first uh, few years of my career, I was in uh, Fort Hood, Texas, and then I assessed for the 160th in uh, right after right after uh, 9/11, and uh, I've been there in the 160th ever since. Okay. Yeah, it looks like some folks are subbing your channel, so we'll get you probably like two subscribers at least. Thank I, you. <laughs> I, I hope we get more than that. We got a lot of people looking at this. You should be clicking through. Look in the description. Look in the chat box if you're in here, or just search Fitty F I T T Y Fitty like titty <laughs> with an F on it. <laughs> so yeah. just look for Fitty Percent Tactical. <laughs> yeah, I, I got that nickname in, in Afghanistan when when a friend of mine found out that I was half black. He thought I, he didn't know I was half black. He's like, what? So he, uh, <laughs> he's like, you know, Fitty Fitty sent the rapper. I want to call you Fitty Percent now from now on. Uh huh. So yeah. I guess you didn't like that, so it stuck. Because whatever you don't like, it sticks. <laughs> I, I I didn't mind it. I thought it was funny. And then uh -huh. when I when I lost my arm, I went back to work, and he said, "Hey, I guess you're only fifty percent as tactical as you used to be." <laughs> so that's what ended up being the the, the name of my channel. Yeah. yeah. So it looks like Screaming Skull Saloon just subbed you. Um, Richard Hughes, he I think he subbed you. We've got Thanks, some other guys. people. Um, no. Actually, I just did too, and Thank I you. did. No, um, I think Richard Hughes says he's been subbed for a long time. Yeah, so, I think I did. Yeah, but we've got some other people sub subbing, um, and you know, thanks to everyone that's getting in there. I think the range one said he he just subbed. So thanks for everyone going in there and subbing. Uh, Fitty's channel is actually um, it's pretty cool. You've got nice production in there, man. I know that's yeah. like not everyone cares about that, but I'm into it. Yeah, I. <laughs> it's funny. I, I can't look at my old stuff anymore because it's just just to me it's crap, and uh, I mean, but the majority of the YouTube audiences they want that raw, you know, right from the camera. Yeah. Video right. that you know some people they they appreciate appreciate a nice edited edited video, but usually that comes from like a bigger production company, and I'm only just one guy, so. I, I do like to see, and I do notice the high definition camera, um, you know, when it's real crisp. And I, I'm not saying it being all polished as far as the editing goes, but just that real, you can tell a really good camera versus a versus yeah. a really cheap phone. Yeah. <laughs> you know? um, yeah. yeah. The, the last, last video I uploaded was from my phone, and I can definitely tell a difference with the well, pixelation. I mean, the, the newer phones like this one, this is a 7, not an 8, but... They come out pretty good. Yeah, I was surprised at what you can do. Yeah, technology technology on the phones kicking up. But here's yeah. the thing: I think like I I have an appreciation of our production. But yes, I agree with you. Most people don't really care. They want to um, they just want to see something. They're trying to either like find out how to do something with this gun or I like make a decision of whether to buy something or not, and they don't care about it. But it's nice. It makes it you know. Yeah. It makes it a little bit easier a transition from the TV world to this. Go uh, ahead, Walter. What I what I really don't like is when you, somebody's doing a video and the wind's blowing and they're not mic'd up, and all yeah. you hear all you hear is wind, and I'm like, come on, guys, just get a cheap wireless mic and get you know. Yeah, audio <laughs> is key. The audience will, is more likely to well, watch a bad video with good audio as opposed to a a, a good video with bad audio. If I have to strain to hear what you're saying. For yeah. very long, I'm out. Yeah. yeah I'm out. Now, sometimes you can't help that, like a shot show on the floor or if well, you go to these noisy. shooting There's events. a lot of background yeah. noise. Yeah. yeah, like if you look at my video I'm going to put out from the IV-8888. All that shooting huh. going on, it's hard to do. Yeah. <laughs> it's insane. Yeah. It's, it's what I call the sound of freedom. Um, yeah, it's cool. But it, that, that's the thing about events like that. It's very tough to, to, to like really take a look at whatever people are showing you and, and, and show that to an audience. I don't think that's super important. I think, um, you know, for me personally, when I go to those things, I like to just talk to the people. But it's tough to translate that, to get good, <laughs> good audio and all that kind oh, yeah. of stuff in there when you're doing that. So sometimes there's no way around it. But obviously... Yeah. Um, I think people do enjoy the production and audio is a big thing because first of all, a lot of times, even me, when I'm looking at YouTube videos, I'm editing. I can't just do that on, you know, if it like, yeah. so I'm editing and I'm listening, but yep. then maybe something happens. And I'm like, Oh wait, I have to look at this now. 
and I'll actually look up and look at it, but you know, so the audio creates that. And then also just like when you go to a movie, the audio is, I mean, it's a huge part of a movie, the audio. Oh yeah. I've, you know? I've, I've been in a couple of 40 hour film festivals and Doing one on our own, our first one we did on our own, like the audio was just crap and it was kind of embarrassing. But then we did one and we actually had a, an audio engineer. We went to his studio on uh, on Music Row in Nashville to edit the film before we turned it in. And just a, such a world of difference from going from nothing to like, holy crap, that's yeah. that just his... his <laughs> his audio editing and, and his production, the way he did it was just it actually made the film better in yeah. my opinion well it's even like when you watch trailers and you hear that guy going in a world yeah. where Hank strange <laughs> wears a mohawk <laughs> and talks shit all day yeah just that alone makes you go wait a second they used to do i don't i don't think they do that that much anymore but it I makes you go was, i have to see this movie <laughs> yeah i think that was a big 90s thing yeah announcer um yeah that was that started somewhere like probably late 80s 90s right that guy yeah. 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 So let me, um, I, I want to keep talking about this. Let me just go through real quick and thank everyone that's subbing you. ATF sucks. He subbed you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Uh, <laughs> um, Mario Molson, he subbed. He said, he, you know, fellow soldier, he subbed. Uh, awesome. Screaming, Screaming uh, Skull Saloon, who did sub you, said, Thanks for your service. Um, Scott Kimball subscribed. Richard Hughes says we need a Florida YouTubers meet. Yeah, we, we probably do. We should do something like that. Um, NFA yeah. Review does some stuff. Um, and NFA Review, by the way, has something coming up this. Oh, crap. I should find I need to go look this up. Yeah, yeah I got something coming up. Yeah, yeah I've got a, I, I'm going to look this up in a second and tell you guys. Um, but but just actually go to NFA Review on Facebook and all That'd of the stuff. Way. Yeah, because yeah. he has something coming up in um, – in Florida, I don't. I don't think I'm going to be here. I'm not going to make it, but I'm completely happy to help him promote it. Um, I carry my revolver in single action. I mean, that's the guy's name. <laughs> that's a lot of. That's uh, a lot of name. Yeah, he says cool name, Fitty. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay, um, and he said he subbed. He says uh, the range one says thanks. E L, which is also a cool name, just E, the letter E and L. Love that. He subbed. Um, Rev Chris. Rebus said he met you guys at he met I met you guys at the NRA show in Atlanta. Cool guys. Chris awesome. Bullis subbed. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Chris B said he subbed the last time you were on. Um, and so there's lots of k k kudos in here. Let's see what else I missed here. A, uh, Thank you to everybody that's uh, subbing. That's awesome. Eric Garcia, Mr. Saving the Day. Yeah. Um, I'm just trying to see what. Yeah, so Scott Kimball said, oh, Richard Hughes said, nice production work. Scott Kimball said, it's an evolution in terms of production. The Tyvin yeah. Show just subbed. Awesome. Tyvin. The, the Tyvin Show, that's a cool dude. Um, so Richard Hughes wants to hear you talk about how you shoot and edit videos, so we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we will get into that. Mike Bryan said, thanks for serving. Mutiny for the Cat, which is a cool name, <laughs> says. <laughs> <laughs> he says he's doing a cheap AR build. What should he start with? What do you, what do you say to that? <laughs> Me? Yeah. Uh, what do you say, Fiddy? How cheap you're going? Yeah. Yeah. I, I would. I would. If you're going to do a cheap AR build, go Anderson. I guess. There's actually cheaper than Anderson. Really? Yeah. Um, you can get um, the magnesium. Well, at me as a dealer, I can anyways. Um, from Centerfire Systems, they had magnesium receivers for, for FFL prices, twenty bucks. Whoa! What? Uh, yeah. yeah. So for so retail, that's probably. Hey, they're selling them for thirty. There's about 34, 33, 34. something. Like yeah, that. but so do we trust magnesium stocks yet? I Supposed mean, I'm sorry, not stocks. Um, receivers. Some of the supposedly the first gen ones had some cracking issues. Right. Supposedly these ones are selling now are like the fourth gen. Right. Um, I have a couple that I bought a few months ago, and I don't know what gen they are, but I think <laughs> I think the earlier ones. I haven't built anything with them; we're just sitting in the safe. So, I'm yeah. kind of waiting to come out when they come out with the the magnesium upper. 
And, yeah, now um, there are companies working on that. Yeah, um, yeah. I know I, I've been talking to some companies and I think look, one of the reasons why we haven't seen some of these companies put it out because they are perfecting the magnesium. Um, I also know there's companies working on polymer versions. Right, and of right. course, um, there's guys, is there a polymer? I know polymer 80 has an, uh, like a 223. There's a 308 um, one too. Is there, there's a 308. So there you go. That might be a cheap way to get into yeah, it, right? I, mean, I, I thought about building a light as light and cheap as I could AR just to see it and then kind of test it, yeah. you know, just run it. Yeah. But um, yeah, yeah, I got a uh, Kaiser Kaiser arm. Kaiser, yeah, uh, Kaiser. Yeah, yeah, yeah that Kaiser, yeah. It, yeah, it, show was, us it that. was pretty. It was pretty cheap. Um, now I got, is that? I got it on that. That stock that I really oh, don't the like. The... Oh, that looks good, man. I actually think that looks good. You don't I, like that? I. It's it's kind of it's kind of airsoft quality polymer. It's like it's that really, really, I don't know, light polymer. Right. It's Hold it up as... again so we can see it. Is that called the Hera or something like that? Up or a little bit higher, a little bit higher. Uh, yeah, the Hera arms. Yeah. Yeah, it looks good. It looks. I like the look of that, but you're yeah. saying you don't like the quality of it. Yeah. It. It was. I was really shocked when I first got it. Um, like, if this was the same kind of polymer with the with the fiber, uh, uh, carp well, not carbon fiber, but like a fiberglass reinforced polymer that like Magpul uses in their in their polymer stocks, it would be a lot better. Uh, okay. But I mean, yeah, I like the look of that. I don't know I, if other companies are going to be able to do it. Go ahead. Yeah, I think the guy that actually started off this kind. Vitaly Bulgarov, he he does the he does all the designs for like um, Ghost in the Shell, the Transformers movies. Oh, okay. All that stuff. He he actually came out with a design, a uh, thumbhole stock design, really yeah. similar to this, and he's he's actually uh, in works in produ in producing the actual thing, and I think it's going to be a lot better than the hair arm CQR stock. So. Oh, okay. So show us the um, Kaiser upper and lower again. So you're are you you're looks like you're in the middle of that project right now, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh. So there you go. Yeah. Everything's up opposite. Yeah. It. I really like. I like the upper and lower. It's a really tight fit. Really mm -hmm. tight. So. Yeah, that's one of the benefits of it. You can't really like. I guess you can if you want to try to do your own thing, but really you have to get the upper and lower combination going there. Yep. So, and I think those guys are going to be coming out with a um, with a three hundred eight. I don't know if I'm supposed to talk about that, so <laughs> I, won't, I won't get deep into it. Uh, <laughs> Straight, yeah. So that's a project you have coming up, right? Uh, yeah. I was going to use the hair arm secure stock for the uh, the Grendel precision rifle build, but it got changed to the to the um, Magpul PRS Gen three because I didn't like. The quality of the uh, polymer, and all, it actually uses a carbine buffer tube instead of a, a rifle buffer tube. I just feel that securing it to the end of the of a rifle buffer tube is a, a lot better. Okay. As okay. in terms for a, a yeah. precision rifle. Okay. Yeah, I have something that I'm building. I I, I can't get those hair things. So, if anyone sees any deals on those, we're going to start doing a section where we talk about deals. But what oh, yes. I'm gonna, what I would put it on is probably a 22 thing now, since you said that. Yeah, yeah. like the last couple of uh, Black Fridays, hair or, or Kaiser Arms have had, you know, pretty good sales on on a, on a, a receiver combo set. I think I paid like maybe 120 bucks for. Oh, that's not bad. The set, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right, yeah. awesome. And uh, you know, when you put up some stuff on that, tag me, man. Let me yeah. know. I know, I know the uh, the guy. The owners of Kaiser and all that stuff. So um, hey, maybe they work on a. Uh, I want to build a 308 PDW, just a real fireball breathing <laughs> blast and yeah, my, auto too. My next build is going to be a um, a 300 black PDW. So okay, cool. Yeah, kind of like a uh, um, like you know Walter has a Rattler. Yeah, did you hear about the Rattler? Yeah, the Sig Rattler. Matter of fact, yeah. Rattler in the house. Yeah, isn't that 300 blackout? Yes, sir. It is. Oh, nice. Yeah. So Walter yeah. has one of those. That's Just nice. got it the other last week. Um, yeah, we I also make. Um, like I also make PDW stocks for AR-15s too. Yeah. So. Um, cool. Yeah. So maybe you can, you know, when 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 uh, Derek's working on his project, Walter, how about you know helping a brother out? Well, I could. <laughs> I mean, if he's yeah. willing to be uh, helped, you know, I mean, that's yeah. A, I think yeah. I think you'd be willing to, you know. 
Yeah, the PD the PDW stock I got coming is, is the brace, so I don't have to do the uh, paperwork. Okay. Well, we're getting ready to do um actually an adapt using our stock that'll have a end made for the um tail hook. Okay. So um I've kind of oh, liked I it. I, I think I've seen that actually on, on Instagram on your page. I, yeah. You probably did. Yeah, yeah. we're mach we're machining those things right now. So yeah, have you had a chance to shoot the tail hook, Derek? I'm interested. To see what you think about that. No, I actually I actually haven't shot any of the uh, the uh, um, the brace adapters. I haven't mm -hmm. shot any of them. I saw the tail hook, but I haven't shot it yet. Yeah, yeah. I like the um, tail hook. It's kind of. <laughs> It's all made out of aluminum too, so it's not plastic or yeah. you know. Yeah, I wish there was a way I could get you a tail hook. I mean, I know the Gearhead works, guys. Maybe have you? Because you know that comes from Gearhead works. You ever heard of those guys? I don't think I have. Yeah. Okay. They're Gearhead works, and yeah. um, I th where are they in Kentucky? Yeah, they're in Tennessee, I believe. Tennessee. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, if they're in Tennessee, then that's isn't that where you are? Yeah. Right here in Tennessee. Yeah. yeah. So um, Gearhead works. We got to somehow reach out to them. I got to figure they're out. They're up. How to do uh, that. They're up near where my machinist um, Chris used to live. Yeah. yeah. So I do know those guys. Maybe we'll see if we can get something going there because I think it would be good to see what Derek thinks about this, yeah. or you know, if it has any kind of relevance to the way that you shoot and all that. You know. Right. Yeah, that, that'd be a good video. Yeah. I've never. I've never. Uh, personally, myself, I've never seen anybody that's missing an arm shooting one so I, yeah. I don't know you know i i know the, i know the 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 <laughs> i know the draw about them you know so yeah. it's, you know, sbr yeah. without being an sbr i think we so. should start a campaign to get gearhead works let's start a campaign where we get in touch with gearhead works and we say gearhead works how about you get an actual person who is what what, what do you call yourself are you like a solo handist <laughs> uh, what, do we, <laughs> what is the politically correct that sounds like something from Star Wars. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm just a disabled fat guy that's all i am i don't, I don't have any special special yeah names. 50, i would like to see what you think about that though go ahead what 50 what 50 solo like <laughs> <I'm> so <laughs> <laughs> but he's um, dead I, he's dead now so yeah, yeah. you don't want to be him <laughs> Do you ever like use your name to um, like you know there's Fifty Shades Darker? Do you ever <laughs> do you ever do videos like you know Fifty Shades of Derek Gray? <laughs> no. Yeah. Oh, Fifty dear. Shades Darker. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's kind of it's kind of funny. My nickname is Fitty, and then my last name is Gray, kind of like the <laughs> character in that in that book. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there should be some kind of crossover Fitty. here. What's funny, like I wanted to name my first. My firstborn son. I wanted to name him Dorian, so that his name would be Dorian Gray. Right, the, right. From the old school uh, uh, oh. story. Yeah, the guy who um, he lived forever, but as long as his painting was around. Yep. Yeah, but it, it, was, it was it was pretty. It was like a. It's a story. Did about your wife morality. veto that? Did your wife veto that? Well, first she's like, "Oh yeah, that that sounds awesome," and then she learned about it from a friend. She's like, "Yeah, we're gonna name him Dorian Gray," and then they're like, "Hey, wait a second, oh, well, do well, you well, know well, what the story? hell he's talking about?" <laughs> <laughs> no, that's cool. My kids are named after um, characters and stories like that I wrote. So, my wife did okay my uh, second son's, my youngest son's name, which is Gunner. Gunner, yeah, that's Gunner. a cool name. That's a that's a. That's a cool name. Yeah, it's Gunner the because I know both of your kids are what I'm gonna call now. You see my air quotes, Derek. Rambunctious. Oh yes, they are. Yeah, they're rambunctious. Is Gunner the more rambunctious one? <laughs> he is. Like my my oldest one ha looks like my wife, but has my personality, and my youngest one looks just like me, but has her yeah. personality. And yeah, he can he can be a he can be a. A handful? <laughs> yeah, a big handful. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. No, they're good kids, man. Uh, when you, whenever you put up videos of them, it cracks me up. <laughs> so, did you? Did I see that you took them to get? They've been getting haircuts. I know they've got curly hair. Yeah, uh, it was actually my wife's first first trip to a black barbershop. and. <laughs> oh. Yeah. When <laughs> nice. we were in, we were and in you, there. Did you go? Yeah, I was there. Oh, okay, but it was her first time, and uh, 
she said, she leaned over. She's like, is it always this loud in here? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, when they get to talking about something they yeah. like, like sports, football, basketball, and that's what they were talking about. They were, talking, they were arguing over whether LeBron James was better than Michael Jordan. So it was, it was yeah. a heated discussion. Yeah. For people like Walter who don't know this, Walter, in the black barbershops. Yes. Uh, Tell me. You know, the movie Barbershop is kind of close to what happens. Yeah. <laughs> In black yeah. barbershops, we we argue about lots of stuff. I've had arguments about Trump with people. <laughs> oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So as a matter of fact, the, the last time I, when I was in there having an argument with this guy that was getting his hair cut, and we were arguing about Trump, and um, so when he gets up to leave, he tells the barber like he's known the barber for a long time. I've just he's known. The, I've had I've had my barber on my channel. Um, but I've known him for maybe two years or something, and he tells the barber, he leans in and tells him, you know, this is exactly like uh, Barbershop the movie. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, and, and we're and we're still friends. We're, everything's all good. But, yeah, we get, it gets raw. Yeah. Yeah, and so obviously your, your wife is a white lady. Right? Yes. Yeah, she's a white woman. She is so, from the Caucasus Mountain region. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. That's that's white with an attitude too. Yeah. <laughs> so no, she, she's not really from the Caucasus Mountains. I mean, I'm just oh, I just okay. want to put okay. context, Derek. I want to put context. Okay. Like people are like, well, why has she never been in the black barbershop? <laughs> so yeah, you know. Um, so <laughs> does she enjoy this experience? <laughs> yeah, she, she thought it was funny. She was trying to keep up with everyone's uh, conversations or arguments or yeah. whatever you want to call them. So I suppose we should ask the question. Like, I think we all know what black barbershops are like, right? They're pretty rowdy. You're going to hear a lot of hip hop music, unless there's ladies. When there's ladies in there, sometimes, yeah. depending on the age of the ladies, they turn down the hip hop music. <laughs> you know, if you've got like an older lady in the barbershop, then they turn, if, it, if she's younger, then the, because it's not censored hip hop yeah. music. Yeah, there's lots of cursing and stuff. I don't know how it was when you went in there. I don't, I don't. I don't think they were playing any music actually. Oh, they weren't playing. Well, music. They, they they were, but it was it was like just instrumentals, I think. Yeah, or sure. maybe because a lot of times when they see kids or moms and kids and stuff like that coming in, and mm -hmm. um, so now did they like you know when uh, when a white lady walked in there did they all of a sudden just switch everything? They're like, wait a second. <laughs> no, the, there's a yeah. couple people that did like a double take. Like, hey, what's going on? Yeah. And then, and then <laughs> they they saw me and they saw my boys and they're like, oh okay. All right, we get it. Yeah, you've got the ghetto pass. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know what's funny to me is it, it's, it seems that black people have a, a better, or they're it's easier for them to notice that I'm mixed and that my sons are mixed than yeah. like white people. Yeah, I never had a doubt in my mind that yeah. you were a black dude. Yeah, oh, like yeah. All, all all my white friends, like when they find out that I'm half black, like what? I n I had no idea. But uh, yeah. one time we were in uh, Sam's Club, and my wife was uh, checking out, and I was uh, looking at the electronics or something, and I was walking back, and I and as I'm walking towards them, I see these two black ladies in front of in front of them. They're looking at my boys, and they're like, they're talking amongst themselves, and they're pointing like, ooh, like they were they were debating whether or not they had black in them. Yeah, <laughs> they, they hadn't seen me yet, and then when I walked up, and they're like, Daddy, they looked at me like, oh, okay. Oh. Yeah, well, now course. we understand. Yeah. yeah. This is a thing. If you can look here, I'm going to lock the screen on Walter's confused face right now. <laughs> <laughs> Walter, this is a thing. It's true, though. Like, a lot of white people don't understand that, you know. So there are I, – I can see how you can get into that situation. Just like um, I think even with me, for example, I'm half Indian, and a lot of people don't realize that. So – um, I well, think the, like the, the, the force. The force is strong with you. In terms of what? Of you? Oh, the blackness. The yeah, blackness. Right, 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 right. Dark right, side. Right, right, right. <laughs> well, it's dark. like okay. For example, um, uh -huh. um, 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 let me see. A uh, white guy marries an Asian woman, right? They have a baby comes out. It the Asian is strong. It's hard. You can't turn that off. I mean, it just. It overpowers right. it overpowers the white guy any day. I mean, it's just uh, yeah. You can know, like for example, like with Keanu Reeves, you can always tell when there's a little something mixed in there. I know for not always. It's not always, but it you know, no, not yeah, it, it depends. Yeah. A lot of different factors, but you know, I know. yes, a lot goes into it, and depending on what the things are. Um, 
like I know with me, uh, black people or people of color can always, can usually tell that I'm somehow mixed. Just like I'm sure that's what Derek is referring to. Yeah. Yeah, that they can tell that you're mixed. Um, you know, but like a white person just sees us all as being black. Yeah. Or like in, in Derek's case, there might be a lot of people to just think, uh, what do people think in your case, that you're just a white guy? It's, it's either a white guy. That's a bad thing, being just a white guy before people get married. Yeah, yeah it's, it's either a white guy or a, a lot of people thought I was Puerto Rican for a long time. Because when, yeah. I, when I was stationed at Fort Hood, that's all, all our crew was like all Puerto Ricans. My, yeah. my best friend at the time was, uh, he's from Nicaragua. And then it was me. So they, everyone assumed that I was part of their group. Yeah, yeah, that happens. Like a lot of people thought I was Dominican and stuff like that. Uh, I know lots of people like that. I have a friend. Um, I don't know if I should really talk about this on air before he comes on because he might not want to talk about it. But I have a friend who's in the industry with us. And a lot of people, when they see him, they think he's like Cuban or something like that. Right. I mean, yeah. they could tell he's not a, like a just a straight up like this dude right here, Walter. But, oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but okay. you know, people, but like you just said, people say, oh, this guy must be Latin or something. And the funny thing is, is that he's like his he's half Jamaican and and um, his I think his dad is Jamaican and his mom is from Belize. Um, so he's not Cuban or Puerto Rican no, no. or anything like that. And, um, you know, it's interesting how it goes down, but it's cool. Right. I mean, I th some people like it. Some people don't. You know. Did you ever, did you ever, like when you were growing up, I know your kids, maybe they're facing it now, but did you have like, you know, things that you went through because of yeah. the ambiguity? Uh, yeah, I, I got a lot like, like right now, right now my son thinks because he sees how light he is and he sees my, my skin tone and then he sees his grandpa's skin tone. He thinks the older you get, the darker you get. <laughs> So, nice. <laughs> yeah. so he, he's still kind of confused on the whole race thing. He doesn't understand it, which is which is fine by me. Uh, when mm -hmm. I grew up, it was it was different. I saw I saw like racism from both sides. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah. Well, because you know you know what you are, and and to be honest with you, like we're making fun of Walter, but it's the same thing that I think. I think we all go through that, right, Walter? I mean, people just well, your identity. You, you know, your identity mm -hmm. is important. I mean, I, I don't, I don't buy this thing that everybody's everybody's the same. Yes, but everybody is different. So, yeah. and your identity is important for you to know what your identity is because it kind yeah. of shapes you. You know, I mean, it you know, does. if you don't know anything about where you're from or what your your makeup is, you don't have anything to yeah to, yeah. to figure out. I, I mean, you right. know. I, I just put something in the chat that, that you guys should check out. We're going to talk about it in a second here. Um, uh, what I was, you know, what I was saying is like, even for you, Walter, right? People are just going to look like we're talking about this, but this happens to white people. Like you're just like someone's going to put you in the category of just being a white guy, but that's yeah. not the simple explanation of what you are, right? Not necessarily. No. I mean, you know, there's white guys from here. There's white guys from there. There's white guys from all over, you know, I don't know. Yeah, and you're like, are you the first generation in your family? You were born here, right? Yeah, so I'm a first generation American, which, right, you know, was kind of my mom. My mom's family was here. Then my dad came over here after World War II. So, and um, so, where's your dad's family from? Um, Poland, Ukraine, um, Germany. I got a German last name, so, mm -hmm. um, so that's that typical Eastern European stuff. Right. My mom's side is English and. There's English and some Scandinavian and and um, the German too, also that side. So, you know, it's I did the DNA thing and it's exactly what I was always told. <laughs> so, what did the breakdown come back as? Eastern, mostly Eastern European and, and English that area, English the okay. Channel area, you know, that, where the water is. They went back and forth, you know, and you know. So, what was the percentage of African? Did you have any percentage of African blood in you? You zero. were zero. So zero. you are from the Caucasus Mountains also. <laughs> I always say it's like Cro-Magnon. I want to find the Cro-Magnon blood. See the, the cave guy. <laughs> ah, that's the big head, you know, the caveman. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, but zero doesn't really mean, like, on the, a lot of these genetic tests, zero, that, that doesn't really mean that you don't have any African ancestry. Well, 
You probably do, but it's so because like a lot of a lot of people get like two percent or one yeah, percent, but well, they, uh, they don't show stuff over a certain percentage. I, right, right. I mean, I have to, you know, the more it's diluted, the more it goes away. So, you know, the more you, more. If yeah. it was way, 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 way back then, the more you throw in, it is not. It goes away. I mean, it, it's gonna yeah. be so. Or it it, the trace will the trace up. will be so small. It's. Need to stick to, yeah. Know. Well, the funny thing with genetics, certain things don't show up, so no. it might not show up in you. Like when my, so for example, my brother and I, um, anonymous also did the genetic test. I think all my bro my my younger brother also did it, but um, so there's things when we're brothers from like the same mom, right? Same dad. The genetic test confirmed that. <laughs> Just for anyone who's wondering, because we were wondering, because <laughs> we all look different. Like Derek is saying with his sons, you know. Um, so we, we, we look a little bit different, but we're all from the same mom and dad, but certain stuff like my bro, my, my older brother, um, I think European blood showed up in his thing and it didn't, and it was zero for mine, but, but my dad has European blood. So, you know, yeah, that's I, the thing about it. Those tests are not, what I'm trying to say is like, those tests are not super accurate. They don't show you stuff. You can always dig deeper and see more than that. Yeah. So you might have a little bit of Mandingo is what I'm trying to tell you, Walter. I go for Cro-Magnon. You know, oh, you prefer for... to have the Cro-Magnon than the Mandingo? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to have the caveman yeah. thing. Caveman. Yeah. We know you have that. We, we can see the noggin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what did, we is, yeah. did we lose 50? Where is he? We got his uh -oh. likeness up there, but we don't have yeah. it. Uh-oh. Yeah. He, okay. He might have put us on mute for a second. Well, I okay. read a story recently about that whole genetics thing, mm -hmm. and um, somebody – that was in a family where they were raised in this family, born in the hospital. In the end, what happened was, but they didn't look, they didn't look right. Mm -hmm. There was definitely one was real tall. The father was real short. Yeah. It just, the whole thing didn't play right. And yeah. they searched and they searched and they searched. They're trying to figure this out and come to find out they were switched at birth. Hmm. Oh, really? For, for real. Not, okay. not a, and they're born in a hospital, I think in New York. And they, they yeah, get all it happens. Yep. Yeah, and, and through genetic stuff, they finally found a, a sibling or a family member and figured it all out. And, and when did this happen for this guy? When was this guy born? Like this in the was 70s, a female, 60s? actually. This, oh, this uh, woman? Okay. I think it was back in the 30s or 40s, 50s, something like that. It was before all the electronic stuff and the fancy tags and everything else. And um, yeah, it all worked out in the end, but you know, it was like. Well, what would have happened if I would have been raised in this family? What would have happened if I'd been raised this way? Da, 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 you know. Yeah. So. Yeah, the, absolutely. The genetics, That's... the genetics thing can be a godsend, and the genetics thing can be a a a, sh, a, a, a destroyer of um, <laughs> your person that you yeah. think you are. And some of us hope, some of us hope, amongst hope, that maybe we're not related to these freaking people that we were raised with you know it's like we all have that dream that we were some prince that was accidentally or deliberately switched so you like, like us like I'm, a, I'm a romanoff the lost romanoff yeah you know like if, if you grow up with people like in my family i always like man i hope this is these people are not really my people <laughs> you know but uh it turns out they are yes they well, are I gotta, the stories i, I live been, with that the the lineage i've been told is what it f came out to be so Mm -hmm. um you know i mean yeah well that's you know i think that's a good thing you know well yeah with no big surprises and you know i told we talked about my my significant others lineage and mm -hmm. there was a slight little little surprise in that um but there was something else that wasn't there that was supposed to be there or what the story was anyways so okay um and that happens so you know yeah i think I think like whenever you get into this stuff, you definitely get surprises in it. And that's what makes it, that's what makes it cool. So, okay. We've been getting some stuff about, there's a bill in, um, let me see, is the bill going through Illinois? So I'm going to try to pull this up right now. I did, uh, hold on. Let me share this for everyone out there. So if folks don't have it here, I'll share it in the thing so that we can talk about it. But I did put it in the description, Walter, and uh, we're waiting for Derek to see. He'll probably, he's probably got something going on there and he'll come back in. Um, so here we go. HB four one zero seven. Right. More they want to so, take. So um, bump stocks could soon be illegal in Illinois. Well, that's not harder to get nationally. 
So this, I'm looking here, this is on uh, uh, Belleville News Democrat. Uh, listen, honestly, if you search HB 4107, you'll see a bunch of stuff come up in the news. This is just the first thing that came up, so I'm going to talk about it. A bill filed Thursday in the Illinois House would make it illegal to buy or sell assault weapons, assault attachments, and 50 caliber rifles and cartridges. Oh, dear. This oh, dear. bill filed by Rep. Martin J. Uh, Moylan, Democrat <laughs> from the Plains, comes just a few days after a man killed 59 people at a concert in Las Vegas using a modifier that made his gun into an assault-style weapon. So... Yeah. So Moylan's bill, HB 4107, would also prohibit the sale or purchase of a trigger modification device of the uh, 23 guns Las Vegas shooter Stephen Paddock had in his hotel room during the massacre. 12 of them were equipped with bump stocks that allowed a semi-automatic rifle to fire hundreds of bullets in seconds. The bump stock is a plastic shoulder stock that is designed to attach to an AR-15 or AK rifle. It is not considered illegal by the, um, by the ATF. Um, or the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms and Explosives. There's no automatic. Um, there's no automatically functioning mechanical parts or springs. Yep. That's why. That's you know. So that's the whole thing. Like so, I said, you were bringing up this thing about reclassifying and all this stuff. There's nothing mm -hmm. to reclassify. Everything's been gone over and over and over and over. I mean. Yeah. You well, can what turn. What, a, yeah. You can uh, turn the definition of a semi-auto into something else, but. You know, a pig's still a pig, so I, I don't know how they're going to do this. I, 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 nothing surprises me in Illinois, though, and they've been trying to get rid of 50 cals forever. So um, if the people in Illinois are that um, asleep, yeah, then I, I guess they get what they get. That's all yeah. I can say. Take a second. I don't know if you saw this link. Just click on that link for a second. I'd like to know what you think about it. I'm going to continue to read through here a little bit. Um, uh, so here we go. Uh, See. Okay, federally, the National Rifle Association announced Thursday that they wanted the government to review whether bump stocks compiled with the law um, or complied, excuse me, with the law or if they should be subject to additional regulations. The Associated Press reported the White House responded saying it was open to having conversations on the issue. U.S. Rep. Mike Boast, um, Republican Murfreesboro, and the U.S. Rep. Rodney um, Davis, Republican Taylorville, sent a letter with other congressional members to the ATF urging a reevaluation of the legality of bump stocks. So, like, I, like I've been saying here, well, this, Republicans are working against us, believe it or not. This article is already telling stories because it says fully automatic weapons have been illegal in the U.S. for 30 years. They're not illegal. Yeah. Full, fully well, automatic weapons are not illegal, by the way. Yeah. No, it's I had, understand. Of course, the, yeah, I mean, the media doesn't fully understand what they're talking it's the about. It's the same old story. You know? Yeah, but what we're trying to get to here is the essence of the narrative that these guys are having. Oh, yeah. well, so everything that, I mean, I'm not saying that everything that these guys are saying is fact, but these are reporters. This is like the print media and what these guys are putting out there. And, and this is going to be the general consensus when you go through all these things. You could um, take this story and go back 15 years to the last time something happened and the story will be exactly the same. Yeah. So, um, you know, so here we go. So they, they wanted to the government to review whether bump stocks comply with the law or if they should be subject to additional regulations. Um, no, no, that's not where I was. Okay. They, um, so these congressmen urged the ATF to, to do a reevaluation of the legality of bump stocks. Some of the most senior Republicans in Congress also say they are open to banning bump stocks. All right, so you, you see, see what they're doing? These guys, they don't want to ban it, but they're trying to push it back on the ATF. Yeah. So because as, mm -hmm. once, once it comes time for election time, X amount of people aren't going to vote for these people if they do this stuff. They yeah. don't want they don't want to be but they don't know this. They think they have political cover. That's what I'm trying to say. That's why I urge yeah. people to like get the word out there, like respond to these people. Well, I, if these I'm, are your congressmen, send them letters, you know, right, send right. them emails. If you yeah, call, them, call them up, let them know that you're mad. You know, and when you see things like this where we're having this discussion, that's why we're asking to show. obviously we want to get more views. We want more people to hear what we have to say. But we're out here trying to help you guys you know, maintain the rights that you have, maybe get back some of the ones that you lost. And the only way to do this was to, is to keep up the pressure, right, right. you know, on these guys. And that's why, why we're doing what we're doing. That's why I encourage you guys to, 
Um, you can share stuff like this. You can you can share the message. You can also get in touch with these guys um, on their social media. You know, talk to them on their social media. Send them emails. Send them letters. If they're in your town, talk to them. When you see them, tell them no. Share, we will vote over this. Share the Facebook stuff. Share your this post on your Facebook page. Yeah. Even if it's just your personal face, just share it so the people. That's what I do on Safety Ever Firearms. I'll put it up there. Hey, you guys in Illinois. That's yeah. what's going on. You know, so yeah. So I'm going to continue this as we mourn the victims and pray for the families of Las Vegas attack. This is in quotes. We must resist the urge to retreat to our ideological corners as a response. Boast. <laughs> this is what the boast guy said in a statement. <laughs> now is the go. time for common sense solutions. Does that common that sense. sounds a lot like the democratic that's, narrative? That's one of their key words. Common yeah. sense. Yeah. yeah. Now is the time for common sense solutions, not political finger pointing. Reports indicate the shooter may have utilized a bump stock device to modify a semi-automatic firearm into what is effectively a fully automatic weapon. As the investigation into this tragedy continues, it's critical the ATF closely re evaluates the impact of these devices and whether they violate federal law. Okay, all they of this was that. done under the Obama administration. They, yes, Walter, the fact that they already did it does not does not eliminate the how fact you, that they will do it again and, make it, and make it illegal. Well, and and they're going to they're gonna make a bunch of stuff illegal when they do that. Well, how is it now? It wasn't illegal. Now it's it's vi how is it? Because oh. this is the world we're living in. This is yeah, why you, you yeah. can't be complacent. Well, you can't think like, oh, Trump's in the White House. We're going to get okay. everything we want. Machine okay, guns, okay, we're going to okay, be able to get okay. those. We're going to have I was, I, was never, I was never thinking that, to be honest with you. No, I, I'm, not I, saying, I, I'm not saying you. I'm saying people A lot general. of people had this big, huge dream of unicorns and rainbows and all that stuff. And yeah, I'm a, I'm a realist. I'm not a... <laughs> Yeah. This is the one place that I, I agree with people who are saying that there's a lot of complacency in the gun oh, guys sure out there is. because sure they is. think they're just going to get everything. Well, you know, this you know, is why the suppressor, the supp lots of suppressor companies are going out of business. I'm just going to tell you well, that right now. When we end tonight, I got to talk to you about something like that. About I have a little something to say, but anyways, not on okay. air. Okay, um, I understand. <laughs> um, um, first, they first they came for the Jews, then they came for the gypsies. And then when they came for me, there was nobody to, you know, that story, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. so first they came for the bump fire. Then they came for the high capacity magazine. And then yeah, they they're going to do this all in a sweeping way. They don't want just the bump fire. There's no way these guys have well, lists and, and pages and pages of things that they want to make illegal. They want your pocket knife, by the way. Yeah, it, it's going to take a lot. More. Look, these guys had 23 guns. We just he had at least 23 guns there. right? I think it was more than that. So yeah. he had all these these rifles there. He, he didn't need a, a bump fire stock. He could have dropped this one, picked up this one. Yep. OK, and to drop that one, picked up this one and, and just kept going. And so what has this got to do with what happened in Las Vegas? Yeah. But what I'm trying to say to you is these guys are just chiseling away at things. Oh, I know that. Death, I'm not, I'm not death by a thousand cuts in this thing. They're going to say, look, when they actually get into talking about this, they're going to go. Yeah, you shouldn't have the, the, the slide fire. You shouldn't have triggers. You shouldn't be able to modify. Matter of fact, you shouldn't be able to modify your gun in any way. Okay. That's the industry right now. Everyone in this industry, uh -huh. like the, the things that are selling, are the people are making their own ARs. So the next right thing now. you know, a oh. regular guy is not going to be able to just do the background check oh. and, and buy an a, a AR a lower and build it up. Even. Speaking of that, we didn't talk about any gun news. There's a story about making your own stuff on the firearms blog, too. Yes. Okay. I, I will totally get to that here in a second. But <laughs> well, we're, uh, we're, we're about out of time. We've been yeah. Time. Uh, okay. I know we're running down in time. So anyway, I encourage you guys to go take a look at that. This could become law and then they can use this to, um, well, it's like, it's like they go, Oh, well, Illinois went for it. You know, this, blah, blah, yeah. blah, you know, it's like, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So I'm I not sure it doesn't, I, I, I haven't seen Derek come back in, so I'm not sure what's going on there. He might have some stuff going we were on. We're talking about going to Knob Creek, weren't we? Yes, go ahead. All right. So how many, how many, how many people listen to Ben to the Creek? Okay. All yeah. right. If, you, if you've never been to Knob Creek, here, let me let me say this. I drive 13 hours to get to Knob Creek, okay? Okay, I do sell things. We have a booth. We sell our stuff. Um, but I hear from all-time people, I only live an hour and a half away. I've never been. It's like, what the fuck are you doing? Get in your car <laughs> one time, put a couple shekels in the gas tank, Put a little mm -hmm. gas in it, drive over, check out the show. It's a big ass gun show, too. What does it cost to get into the show? I think it's ten or fifteen dollars, something like that. Okay, that's not bad. Yeah, it's not bad. Go to the show, see the show, walk around, maybe buy a couple things. 
see some machine guns get shot, you know, mm -hmm. get out, hang out with your fellow crazy gun owners, you know, like we all are <laughs> and, and have some fun, you know, um, who knows? Knob Creek might not be around forever either. That's been rumored for a long time either. So too, also it hasn't happened, but there's lots of people who like to turn off these kind of events. So, um, don't don't use the excuse it's an hour away or two hours away you poor things um <laughs> yeah so explain to people exactly what knob creek is okay I mean, how creek, long has it been around and what is it knob creek's a a, a a gun range that's in west point kentucky um which is just outside of louisville about 20 miles outside of louisville right along the ohio uh the ohio river um t uh, indiana's right across the river um they've been doing it I started going in 99, but it's been going on way before that, Back in started back in the 80s, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Um, big gun show, um, big shoot. There's three different ranges. You can rent yep. guns on the lower ranges and shoot machine guns if you want. Okay. On, the, on the main line, it's um, um, just you mainly just watch because there's guys, it's hard to get a spot on the main line unless you know somebody. Um, they have a night shoot, tracers, Tannerite, diesel fuel, all over the place, man. Ricochet, you see tracers going off out into the woods, all kinds of fire and stuff like that. Um, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, it's a slower day because it's the last day. Um, if Dead Ender says he's going to be there, Walter. If you guys are close, I encourage you to go because uh, there might not be too many more of these. Well, you know, I'm not saying that's going to end anytime soon, but if you're that close or you're relatively close, you can bring the family, you can bring the kids, and you know, the wife if they like that stuff. Typically Saturday is kind of like family day. Lots of uh, They just by the way also they just they just put down cement inside the pole barn so there's no more dust. It used to be back you know last time around there was people walking around and there's a lot of dust and you know but but anyways, yeah, check out Knob Creek if you check out Knob Creek if you can. Um, and if you like military guns, it's a military gun show for the most part. So yeah. if you're looking for parts and pieces and things that you can't find in normal places, Knob Creek is sometimes a place to find it. Yeah. Richard um, Hughes says, let's rent a plane and fly. Well, I'll, I'll leave that one up to you. I, I, uh, I, I have quite a payload for myself, but, um, <laughs> stuff that we bring up there. But, um, I, uh, I like, uh, I like, I, if I was, if I was going as a civilian, I'd be going to, for the gun show and for yeah. looking for, looking for yeah. things. But you're going to buy and sell stuff, right? Right. We, yeah, mostly sell yeah. stuff. Yeah. Dead yeah. Ender says the Jungle Walk is great. What's the Jungle Walk? It's a it's a shooting course where you compete, you know, and shoot at targets and do the walk walk the course. Um, okay. That's that's I've never done it before, but I heard it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, so now I don't know. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Like I said, though, you can you can rent machine guns also in the lower ranges, and if you've never shot a machine gun, it could be your chance. So. Yeah. So I know there's some contention here as whether or not this HB uh, 4107 is in effect right now. I don't know that it's in effect at this moment. No, I don't think so. Uh, the only, the only, uh, it could be very soon though. I don't yeah. you know. Um, California is the only place that I know where 50 cal is illegal. So the 50 caliber cartridges is legal. Oh, the, yeah. Yeah. The cartridges, um, yeah. everywhere Crispy. else, not so much. Yeah, Chris B says uh, his he's closer to you to Knob Creek than you are, so he yeah. should go. You should definitely go. Anyone that goes there, I encourage you to go find the Safety Harbor booth, hang out yeah. with Walter, post up pictures, hit like tag me on social media. C C eighteen in the pole barn. C eighteen, yeah. like um, C18. yeah. I mean, get together with a couple friends, you know, right over with a couple buddies, you know. I mean, um, share the cost of the the gas, and if that's an issue, I mean, I know everybody's not everybody's not Donald Trump with money. So, I mean, you know, right. So now what are you hoping to get out of Knob Creek this year? What do you <laughs> make some money? Of course. Right. Uh, Sell some stuff. Um, what kind of yeah. stuff are you selling over there? I'll have uppers. I'll have, uh, all the Sten part stuff that we sell. Um, plus I usually bring up miscellaneous stuff I have around the shop. Yeah. Um, even some, even some blem stuff and stuff like that. Sell it cheaper. Yeah. Um, parts Tango, Tango Hunter says, here I thought Knob Creek was just the name of a porno. It's the name of a whiskey, too, by the way. Yeah, Knob Creek. whiskey. Yeah. It is. And then he says, pole barn, laugh out loud. Oh, pole barn. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, 
No, it's, it's good. Everybody's cool, too. You know, everybody makes fun of people with guns like, oh, they're, you know, they're dialing, blah, 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 blah. I've never seen any of that there. Nine times, I, you know, every once in a while, you get some grumpy guy come walking through. But for the most part, everybody gets along. Everybody is, uh, you know, on the same kind of mindset, you know. And, yeah. Um, if, you're, if you're looking to shop, if you're looking for the deal, you want to show up on Friday because that's when um, that's when the – the serious buyers are there on Friday, so. Oh, okay. So, what kind of stuff are you looking? Obviously, you're looking to sell stuff. What kind of things are you looking to uh, to acquire? I'm always appraisal? looking for oddball gun parts and stuff. I mean, I don't have anything in particular. Used to be back in the old days, I'd always end up buying some parts kits and stuff like that. But um, I go over and I'm looking for ammo. I'm looking for more magazines. You can never have enough magazines. Uh, mm -hmm. Just oddball absolutely, stuff. I totally agree yeah. with that. Yeah, it just uh. I would it, buy. Um, do you think you're going to see slide fire stocks there? Um, there'll probably be a couple there for sale. I'm sure. I mean, yeah, that's the place to make find a new home for it if you, you know, you want. Yeah. Um, we will see some different kinds of triggers there. And I caution everyone: don't don't think that you know you can buy these things, but don't think that you buy something and they're going to grandfather it. Democrats well, have caught up to that. They're not into grandfathering shit anymore. Yeah, I mean, don't. So, I, I personally don't get caught up in the crazy buying stuff because I've learned from this happening numerous, num over and over and over that it usually always calms down. Yeah, and things go kind of back to normal, especially with magazines and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm so not gonna tell you not to buy, but if you just, you know, just buyer beware. I hate to see people that buy, paid two thousand dollars for an AR-15 and it's only worth four hundred bucks. So. Yeah, I mean, we're not 100% there. It's not panic time. I'm not no. trying to make people panic. Our, our phone this is probably, yeah. You know, if it was crazy, our phone would be ringing off the hook and it hasn't been yeah. running off the hook. So, L like anything else, when it comes to guns, I, I recommend that people buy low and sell high. Be um, smart. But, but there's, yeah. not a, there's not a big run on the market right now in guns, but there is a bump. I mean, you know, thanks I was to, talking um, to some people, there is a bump. Yeah, thanks to, um, well, probably for AR-15s and things like that a little bit, but thanks to uh, our former president, there's probably twice as many guns in the country than there was when he took a, took office, especially AR-15. So Yeah, people have already bought a lot of guns and things like that. There's already yeah. a lot of things out there. And a that's why I caution you guys. What makes you think there's already a lot of guns out there? So what are they really going to do? So if you follow that, that, um, that, the thread of that logical thought down to the end of it, you'll realize that since there's already so many guns out there, the next, after they just make things illegal, the next thing is to go, you cannot even own these things. Yeah. If you own them, you have to destroy them, get rid of them yeah. and turn them Good in. Luck. Yeah. Don't think, okay, but don't think America won't make these laws. I mean, America is the last country in the world that hasn't done it and we don't yeah. want it. But I don't want people yeah. to be complacent. If you if you just think in your mind, no, it'll never happen, it will it will fucking happen to you. If you <laughs> think it's never going to happen and you don't have to do anything about it because you're guaranteed it, it'll happen to you. It's not guaranteed. It's Yes, it's in the Constitution, but look around what's happening in the world. No one gives a shit about the Constitution. We have to make them give a shit. You know, yeah. We have to make these people stand up. We have to make these people accountable. We have to make the ones that are in office and we're supporting them being in office pay when they betray us. Just reminding you guys of that. Well, it's not like, don't believe that, oh, no, this will never happen because shit will happen. Lots of stuff that people thought will never happen have happened. Okay? If you go back, go back like two years ago or five years ago and see then. the odds of a – go back go back two years ago. Of Trump being what, elected? Yeah. Go look at that. It will never fucking happen. That would be the odds of it. Well, they, they, you know, I know people that won good money when tr the day Trump got elected. Oh, yeah. Well, no okay. So, because the odds were really astronomically <laughs> low that he would ever become president. So that yeah. it was like good money to be made making that bet. Look so there's happened. lots of things that people thought would never, ever happen. And hey, we're living in that world. You know what <laughs> Tango I mean? Hunter says, you said, and that's, you know, what? he said so, the bad word. Yeah. yeah. Um, one of the things, uh, so we were talking about whiskey, and yeah. I carry my revolver in single action, wants to know what is our drink of choice. So I'll go ahead and let you. Um, um, well, I like um, I, I like Jack Daniels. I mean, yeah, a lot Jack of people Daniels. a lot of people have bad experiences with Jack Daniels, but I like that. Oh. I, like, I like Jim Bean. Jim Bean's good. Yeah. Um, so I like a nice ginger beer. 
A nice drink. <laughs> I don't have a drink. Uh, what's the what's the name brand of that ginger beer I like, Lola? No, no, no. The ginger beer. Ginger beer. Oh, Goss. Huh? Goslinger. Yeah, Goslinger. That's like a really good okay. ginger beer. That's what I like. All right. And that's not obviously that's not a that's not an alcohol. Lola, what do you mix it with? She does mix it sometimes when she mixes it with a little bit of rum. Do you have a specific rum you like mixing it with? Oh, the Goslinger's rum. That's what she likes mixing. Oh, wow. Okay. So there you go. That's that's mostly on Lola. Every now and then she tr she tries to get me drunk so she could take advantage of me. Oh, yeah. You know, and not in the way that you think because when I drink alcohol, <laughs> like you see all this craziness. I don't drink coffee. <laughs> yeah, I don't drink coffee. I don't do any of that stuff. So when I drink alcohol, it knocks me out. Uh, Sometimes yeah. Lola gets tired of me, and she's like, "Here you go. Here you go. Get yeah. away from me." Yeah, she tries to, uh, you know, that's how she calms me down. So induce a coma. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay, I don't think we're getting Derek Gray back. I want to okay. remind everyone to uh, subscribe to his channel. Yep, okay, I did. That's fifty percent tactical. Um, he, I don't know why I didn't do it last time, but I don't know. Yeah, okay. The uh, There's a link in the description here so you guys could do that. We're going to wrap it up. We've been going uh, longer than we've been going for a while now. So I think, oh, did, this... you get, did you get all your stuff out of your system? Me? Yeah. Did you get uh, it all out of your system? Enough. enough. Okay. I mean, because <laughs> this is, this is going to wind up in the final 15 minutes at some point. Oh, so okay. be careful what you talk about. I didn't talk about my trip out to the IB8888 yep. range. Took Lola with me. We had a great time. Everyone, of course, was thinking about the stuff the NRA did. Yeah. There was a PR rep from the NRA there. We didn't beat him up, but he got he got an airful. <laughs> I bet he did. Yeah. yeah, he got an airful. But we're gun guys. We don't go out there. True gun guys aren't out there trying to hurt people. So nothing was, happened um, to him. No, no, no. But was Hickok yeah. out there? No, he wasn't. He wasn't there. Um, okay. But yeah, I did see good. a lot of other YouTubers. I know that there are YouTubers who have had. Um, videos on their channels deleted, and if you get if you get a video deleted on your channel, it's a strike. Oh well, yeah, and you only get three, huh? Yeah, I think you get three strikes. I could be wrong, but when you get a certain amount of strikes, they delete your whole channel. So they deleted videos related to um, related to slide fire. But I could tell you guys that there's other stuff out there that um, that they want to do. Well, I'm sure they do. Yeah. yeah. So oh, I mean, hey, I want I wanted to mention. Um, those that are watching that come by the creek and say hello, I'll have some patches with me too. Okay, nice, nice. So um, you know, say hi, and you know, you might get something. <laughs> you yeah. will get something. You might. might. So which okay. which patches are you taking with you? Um, I'll bring. Well, I'll have the I'll have the Trump rooster, and I'll bring a I'll bring some keg twelve ones too. So um, yeah. Okay. Plus, I got I got a new patch coming on Friday actually. Okay. Um, which is uh, has to do with the first lady. And it's completely clean, nothing bad. Okay, but that's gonna you're not gonna have that until you No, come I won't back. have those with me because they're showing up Friday. Okay, yeah, we will when Walter gets back, um you're getting back you'll be back on Monday. I'll be back in the shop Monday afternoon. So but cool. don't call trying to find me on Monday afternoon, all right. Yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> well, I mean I'll be there, but I'm not usually like He's not in the mood. Um, so let me just quickly tell you guys this because I was mentioning this and I know for a fact it happened to a lot of YouTubers out there. Military Arms Channel had some videos deleted. So did 22 Plinkster and, and some other guys. Um, you, this is a headline. You can search it. YouTube bans gun modding tutorials after Las Vegas shooting. Following the deadly massacre in Las Vegas last week, YouTube has begun banning videos that depict tutorials on gun modification according to a YouTube spokesperson. This was an expansion of an existing policy in the wake of the Las Vegas shooting to prohibit videos that demonstrate how to convert firearms to make them fire more quickly. The spokesperson said the company has long had a policy against harmful and dangerous content that mm. includes videos that are trying to sell or promote firearms as well as conversion devices and a device called a bump stock. So just think about that. That's what we're up against in YouTube, um, you know. So after the sh it goes on, but after the shooting, YouTube said it took a closer look at the videos in question that teach how to adapt semi-automatics and expanded its policy to cover such content. But it it has been quick to take the the offending clips down. 
So, I mean, this is this is going to go on, and this is the thing that we're telling you guys why you know we need your support on things like Patreon. Yeah. And I'll be honest with you, Patreon's not going to really it's it's probably not going to last forever for gun guys because yeah. those guys are also um, um, they're anti gun. Based in, they're based in San Francisco, so that just tells you a whole lot. Yeah. So you know, there's a lot come in there. You know, there's things that. Um, you know we're trying to we're trying to do stuff about this and see if we can find a way to uh you know to 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 like serve ourselves to be honest right. with you like in other words we, where we don't depend on, um, on others yeah we don't depend on youtube or or facebook or instagram or patreon or any of these places to do what we do it's not an easy thing to get done so nope 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 not absolutely all right, so I remind, I'm going to remind you guys again, make sure you subscribe to 50% Tactical. There is a link here. Just search 50% Tactical on Google or inside of YouTube. Walter, machine, gun shoot, machine Gun Shoot is this weekend. Somebody was, uh, I think they were asking there. Yeah, so Walter, what what's, um, before I do my closing stuff here, what do you want to? Like I said, heading off to the creek on uh, driving up on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. uh, set up for dealers is on Thursday, and then Friday, Saturday, Sunday for the public. Um, then when I get back, we're going to be doing some testing on the, the 50 cal, uh, shorties and pistols, do some carnograph and some target shooting and see how they print. Um, what else we got going on? There's some other stuff going on also. Hopefully 50 calibers, hopefully 50 BMG continues to be legal because those guys are putting that in their bill in well, Illinois. Yeah, that, that Illinois thing, like I said, they've been trying forever to do that and it, it's getting shot down every time in Illinois. So. They figured, well, wow, what the hell? Let's attach it to something else and see what happens. So, right. um, you know, hopefully not. But people in Illinois, wake up! Hello. Yeah. You know, um, get a hold of your people. Make a pitch a fit. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, uh, Illinois is run by uh, Chicago, so and they're a bunch of leftists. So. Yeah. Old story. But anyways, yes. so then we'll be back from the creek and be doing some working on some new stuff and. You know, just doing our typical thing, you know. Absolutely. Okay. Um, the Archangel says oh, we need to – go ahead. Plus, we're going to be going to uh, SEMA coming up here, me and you. Absolutely. A couple of weeks. I think we got our paperwork. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what I heard. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. That's going to be interesting to be out in Vegas and see how they handle the security at SEMA because SEMA is a – if anybody that hasn't been, SEMA yeah. makes the shot show look little. Right. And so, while we're out there, we'll still report back to you guys and we'll even try to do this a couple of times. Uh, we'll, we'll be talking car stuff, but we'll also talk about because we talk about car stuff here. So we'll talk about. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And off road yeah. vehicle stuff. And yeah. 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 Um, Archangel says we need to start a gun tube service like YouTube, but only for the sec two a channels. I agree with you. There is something like that already in full 30. I think we need a platform that serves all the different Across things. The like board, it's like, yeah. yeah, it's like YouTube, it's like Facebook, it's like this thing, it's like that thing. Gun you can broker, buy stuff and sell gun stuff. Broker, gun broker, yeah. yeah, exactly. It can replace gun broker because gun broker has also stabbed us in the back and, and it's gun not broker, who by doesn't, gun people. I didn't realize it, but for those who don't know, gun broker is very expensive to sell guns on. So Yes, it is. It is very expensive. I, don't I also feel like they're not gun people. They're well, worse than the NRA, to be honest with you, in my yeah, opinion. They're money grabbers. Yeah. So they're not, so. they're in it all about the money, which is fine, but they're not gun people. They may pretend to be, but they're not. Jeffrey so, Daves, yes, I'm going to the creek. Yeah. Um, he can absolutely. Play. Okay. I'll be there. So, yes. It's going to take a lot of money. Uh, you know, hey, we're trying to see if we can make something like that happen. I can't really, yeah. you know, I, I think there's already people doing things and trying to do things out there. And I'll do everything I can to make something like that happen. You can rest assured. Okay, so I'm going to wrap this up finally. Um, I want to thank everyone who does support us on Patreon, like we were talking about before. It's more impor it's important now more than ever. So we're on Patreon slash Hank Strange. Um, you know? Also, but yeah, I started a Patreon account too, actually. Absolutely. Yes, you did start a Patreon account. Do you want to tell people why? Well, um, some gun development funds. Yes. And right. um, kind of just if you want to kind of see what's going on sometimes in the at the shop in the background and things like that, we'll do stuff like that. Who knows? Like when I'm at the creek, you know, um, yeah. things like that, you know. Right. So folks might not uh, may not realize this. I mean, we're always trying to get Walter to develop uh, gun ideas and stuff like that that we have. The problem is, obviously, you know, this is a small family business and they've so, got to make the stuff that's selling. Right. Right. So sometimes sometimes you got to you got to make money over making fun. 
Yeah, so speak. So, right, exactly. So what I think Walter is thinking here is if, we, if he has a way to help fund these projects, then we will be able to make things that can that we can either bring to people very affordably because you know a lot of what you pay for with things at development costs. Right, we can right, be right. we will, we will be able to bring things to people and and then you know maybe also we can do some open source stuff right. that you guys can build on your own if you really want to save even more money. And everybody wants to have an event, so that could help with that too. Yeah. So so that'll be that as time goes on here, we'll be developing that and helping Walter out right. with that. So right now we're Patreon slash Hank Strange and Walter, what's your thing? Um Patreon slash Safety Harbor Firearms. There you go. So um also for, if there's other ways that you guys can support us, you can share all this stuff we're doing here on social media like this video. Um we also have uh t shirts. I, I don't have one now, but <laughs> we've got t shirts from Forged from Freedom. It's the Hank Strange collection. You guys could check that out. We also have some affiliate links in the description. So if you're looking to get certain things, you guys can go in there to those affiliate links. If you're going to buy something, you could buy it through those links. That helps us a little bit. Of course, you can subscribe and all that. And there are people that help support the channel, like this guy right here, Safety Harbor Firearms. You know, they help I, keep the channel going. You know, it, t it takes this, this right here, this little guy here was two grand, by the way. Yeah, a lot of that is developmental costs. I'm sure that I, I, passing on I have to, to have this to put my stock on to try it out. Yeah, you're saying, "Oh, poor Walter," but yeah, I had to no, I no, I understand. Yeah, it's a lot of money to make a stock that you're not 100 percent sure that everyone out there is going to buy it. I or you make a stock and you think it fits, and then you go to put one on a gun for real, and it goes, "Uh oh, it don't work." So yeah. that's. <laughs> you want to find yeah, out. it is developmental costs. Absolutely. Uh, I also want to thank Andrews. Custom leather, Rand COP, and of course, Big Daddy Guns. Big Daddy. Right here, Big Daddy Guns. I want to thank those guys for uh, supporting the channel. And I want to thank everyone that's in the chat hanging out with us, all the good questions. I know we didn't get to everything. We'll be back tomorrow to do some stuff. Are you coming on tomorrow? I don't even know. I can know do that before. It can, be the, it can be the final before I take yeah, off for the one. Yeah. Do we know what's going on tomorrow, Lola Strange? Nope. Huh? <laughs> Oh, we've got the guy from my dental lock. He's coming on tomorrow. So yeah, Walter, that'll be cool to come yeah. back on. I think that's it. Walter, any final words? Big Daddy Guns. Uh, Big Daddy Big, Guns. Big Daddy. Big Daddy. <laughs> okay, we're out of here, guys. Thank you. Peace. See you we're later.